What's going on, guys? This episode is brought to you by Ice Shaker, and this is the 26-ounce Ice Shaker brought to you by the Gronkowski Brothers. It is made from kitchen-grade stainless steel and will not hold a smell like your regular plastic shakers. It holds ice for up to 30 hours, so make sure to keep your drink cold for as long as possible. And also, it is customizable, so you can put your own custom name, logo, or whatever on here. We did the custom Hostile Ice Shaker. This will be available at Hostile.com soon, but if you don't want to buy ours and you want to go to IceShaker.com, you can use code RBP to get anything on their site for 20% off. They offer all these different colors and styles. This is These are the shaker bottles, 36, 26, and 20 ounce. They also have this awesome cooler bag here. Um, this cooler bag is made from a high quality polyester. It's waterproof, resistant to dirt and bacteria and stains. It has long-term insulation for cold or hot food. Uh, it has dual waterproof metal zippers and pulls for easy access. And it has this shoulder strap that's padded also for easy carrying around your food. Now, anything on the site, whether you customize it or not, they have the custom shop here. You can customize all these different things with your own logo or name or whatever you want to do to them. All, everything on the site will be 20% off when you use code RBP. Check it out, guys. High quality shakers. You can also check it out at hostile.com if you want to get ours. Use code RBP at iceshaker.com and get yours now. <laughs> What's going on? Not much, man. Happy to be here. How lean are you now? You've been dieting for four days. So lean. So <laughs> lean. <laughs> <laughs> Took out all the orange juice and all the, you know, all the cereal and fuck, dropped seven pounds. Crazy, huh? Do you miss, you dropped seven pounds already? Yeah, but you know, just that initial inflammation. Initial, like, like, yeah, yeah, initial. Water. I feel good now. So like, obviously breathing is a lot better, you know, just not being 280 anymore and workouts are extremely it just that, that good feeling after about a weekend you know but, pe but people think when you're breathing heavy that means you're dying yeah i i, I found that out <laughs> well, you are yeah. what's up logan what's going on man too long to get in here <laughs> i just got your dinner is it because you're baked no, no, I'm not actually baked this time. It's just because I don't know what I'm doing with the computer. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out today. I need to go to the dispensary. He's like, uh, well, we I already got that covered. Wait a minute. So it's it's 12 o'clock where you are, right? No, it's only 11 o'clock where I'm at. Where are you right now? I thought you were in, in Florida. Where are you? No, I'm in Illinois with, uh, with uh, Quincy and the kids. Oh, okay. So you're an hour behind. Yes. Are you normally baked by 11 o'clock? Uh, I, I don't smoke as much as I used to. Now it's only at nighttime right now. Oh. And I've moved to edibles now. I probably so, smoke more than this guy does at this point. Right now, yeah. You might at this point, because I was yeah. smoking all prep. I start smoking at, like, between 4 and 6 p.m. Why? Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> well, I don't know. Are you, become, are you becoming chronic? Well, I smoke every day, for sure. Yeah, but before you were smoking, like, before bed kind of to relax now yeah, you're like I've, I've had a hard time getting my like i always get all my food in but it's been more difficult so i found myself smoking earlier in the day to help myself eat uh, okay are you still eating like a lot of food a ton of food or no yeah i mean i, I maintained like almost 280 the whole time i was off so that's pretty yeah. good yeah 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 oh yeah. so like i was eating pretty good to keep that weight up so logan you you're not smoking during the day now what time so what time do you start smoking we wait until we lay the kids down at night so it's around like well we do around like 6, 6.30. That way, by the time we lay the kids down around 7, the edible starts kicking in. And then by 7.30, when the kids are down, we're just baked and good to go for the rest of the night. <laughs> strategy what, if, here. what if the kids wake up? <laughs> well, then we're just baked and handling the kids. <laughs> oh, God. What, else, what else fucking answer would you get from that? <laughs> I mean, so we, eat this, we eat this other, gu other gummy that stops yeah. us from being high. <laughs> we have a secret edible that stops the high. Yeah, <laughs> uppers and downers, uppers and downers, uppers and downers. Um, so what? Okay, I gotta ask some really personal questions. Oh God, for who? For you, because nobody knows you yet. We're not no, not nobody, but you know the podcast people don't know oh, you for sure. Yeah. So you said kids. Yes. How did you have kids overnight? Well, I, well, I didn't have the kids overnight. <laughs> she already has two kids. Yeah. So I just jumped into the uh, stepdad role pretty. So like Insta, so like Insta fam. 
Yes, Instafam, exactly. Like, like just add just add water and you're good. <laughs> just add water and there the kids are. <laughs> That's it. How old are they? Uh, six and four. What's it like being a stepdad all of a sudden? You're not even fucking mature enough for yourself. How the fuck are you a stepdad? Yo, it, it, look, this actually matures you really quick. Yeah, so how long, say, wait, wait, how, quick. how long have you been together? We've been together, man, for going on seven months. Seven months. And when did the stepdad thing like take hold? Did you like back away for a little while or you jump in right away? Right away. Right away. Right away. I had no hesitation. I mean, it literally was very smooth. I didn't have no hiccups. I like jumped right into it. Did they get mad at, at least, you? Go ahead. At bro. least you skipped the diaper roll, the diaper yeah. diaper roll. <laughs> <That> is- <laughs> <laughs> you waited. You waited and started dating there until you could. It's strategic. It was strategic. No, no. Yeah, he'd been he'd been creeping on Instagram. He's like, I'm gonna wait till those kids are out of the diaper phase, and, like, <laughs> and then I'll make my move. Yeah. Once they're at least like three past three, then I'm getting in there. Yeah. You know? It's all planned out. So yeah. when they get when they get upset, are they like, "Fuck you, you're not my dad"? Do they do that? No, actually, no. They actually listen to me very well. Actually, <laughs> now look, I'm not saying one day it might not happen. I, mean, I don't know what I'm gonna do when it happens. I'm like, oh shit, she's right. I'm not. You're just gonna take your shirt off and start flexing. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you. Bigger than you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's going on? What are you? Uh, what are you weighing in at now, Logan? Uh, actually, two eighteen. Like my last check-in on last Friday. And what's the cutoff now for you? Since you turn. So for those people who don't know, Logan turned pro this year. Yeah. What was yeah. it? What What show did you turn pro at again? I forget. The Amateur Olympia. The Amateur Olympia. That's right. So you turn pro and classic. And yep. for the for those people who don't know, I'm going to give you guys a look at Logan's physique. Follow him. His his account got his account got hacked. Would you have like ninety thousand followers at the time or something like that? I had close to sixty thousand, and then it got hacked the day after I went pro. All right, so, so follow Logan LG the future. Are you still the future, or you're kind of the present now? Well, I guess I kind of work on that name now, don't I? I don't know what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> okay, LG the now. Well, because he can't be the future forever. Like, it doesn't make sense. You got to change this. Oh, oh shit. Well, because well, can I be the future until I win a pro show and then I'll change it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. until, until you win Olympia, you can still say it's like always the future, you know? I guess yeah, you can do the whole, you know, you can, what's his name? Um, bodybuilder. Uh, Patrick Not Moore. Patrick Moore. Patrick Moore. Patrick Moore. Patrick Moore, just be the future for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> See, now I don't want to have that stigma on me. Just do it forever. <laughs> I don't want to do that. All right. So, LG the future underscore IFBB pro for those listening on audio. Um, it's a good physique, Logan. So this is, this is recent. Uh, that was, Oh, this is from, the prep, file. from yeah. the prep from the prep files. Yeah. This is you recent just stuff in your face. It's like a stoner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Getting is, creative. Is, okay. This isn't, this is your physique anyway. This is what we're looking at. Okay. So what were you at? What were you in turn pro? What, what weight? Yeah. I weighed in at 184. So you still have like 20 pounds to put on. Because what's your height? You weigh, aren't you like six feet tall? No, I'm only 5'9". No, you're not. Yeah. You've been, our, you've been a hostile athlete for like fucking two years. And I didn't, you're 5'9"? I'm 5'9". I'm, I'm weigh, I'm 5'9", exactly. Doesn't he look taller, Ian? Yeah. It's because his midsection, like he's got a very long midsection that makes him look tall, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Look at this guy. <laughs> what the hell that's was before, i thinking? that's before he knew how to open his lats up there you yeah know? yo i remember i remember a coach my very first coach told me to open my lats up and this is what he said to do he said put your arms out in front of you and then bring them down like this <laughs> so that's what i did that's, <laughs> that's what you did i can see that <laughs> that's yeah. exactly what i did nothing happened <laughs> <laughs> you and your girl train together uh sometimes not all the time we usually get in there and then just go our separate way sometimes but every now and then we do yeah Okay, so sorry. So you're, go ahead, Ian. I said, did anyone else find it hard to open their lats when they first started bodybuilding? Well, uh, when we first started, some of us didn't I, have lats, so we just had to figure it out. Actually, that's a good point. <laughs> I think I had a, you know, I think I've always had a pretty easy time posing. Not to be like I'm not tr- not trying to, but it's like one thing I didn't find too difficult. Yeah, but I think it took forever for Melissa to learn to open her lats up. Yeah, it's usually the one thing that people have trouble with because it's like an yeah. uncomfortable feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a five nine, what's your cutoff? Two hundred five or two ten, something like that. Uh, right now it's two hundred for five nine. So you still have like fifteen pounds to put on. Yeah. Where are you going to put it on? Hopefully my back, according to you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see your hey, back. Is it really bad? I, I got to be honest with my athletes. 
Well, like if you go to, um, yeah. if you go back out of this one and go to the video, that's right up. If you go up to the right, you can see like how my back looks. And I understand it does need a, um, it does need some work. Look, it's not bad. It's just in comparison to the rest of your body. Like your shoulders yeah. are, your shoulders are crazy developed and your legs are good and stuff. Your chest could be thicker and your back could be thicker. That's all. My You're entire good. rear side, I do know needs more work for sure. No, your hamstrings are good. Your calves are good and you have a huge ass. You just need more back. Yeah. Yeah. A little more thickness in the back for sure. Like mid back. Like your legs are good front to back, side to side, shoulders, yeah, like shoulders, arms are good. Your chest has got a good shape section. to it. That's the craziest midsection, eh? Yeah. Yeah, it is. If yeah, you good. were over, if you were over five, if you're five nine or higher, weren't wasn't your cutoff at 197 though? Yeah. So how are you only 200 in the pros? I don't know. I looked, I even I just looked it up yesterday. Still only 200. I think you're, I think you're 207. Because I was in your same boat. And then I just said oh, then I Did said they change it and gain 50 pounds. It what could be, I mean, I remember when I looked at it. <laughs> Wait, what is this walk you're doing here? Well, if you listen to the music that's playing, it's because it goes too. Okay, but is that like a, is it, are you dancing? Like, what is Look, that? Man, I don't know. I was actually, I was, I was dancing the entire <laughs> show. Logan, you're the best, man. <laughs> I, love I mean, look, there was a video of me, I think out there when one of the guys were posing, I'm on the side, still dancing to the music. I were can't you, shut off my dancing. Were you high for this? Shockingly, no. Shockingly. What's your background, Logan? Like ethnic wise? Yeah, like what's your ethnicity? Black, white, Native American. Damn, you got all the minorities. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, Brett, you're right. Five nine. Uh wait. <clears throat> so it depends. Five eight up to and including five nine is two hundred pounds. Five nine up to and including five ten is two oh seven. So, so no five nine right on the button, he is two hundred pounds. Yeah. Yeah. So get on an get on an inversion table then. Yeah, Do those things actually work. I heard you guys talking about it on here before. No, yeah, they you, could, you could get a, like an eighth of an inch out of it for sure. Look, yeah. I don't know if it, I don't know if it works for making you taller, but it definitely works for injuries and like stretching yeah. out your spine. Yeah, yeah. definitely works, hundred percent. I can That's I can vouch for that. Um, anyway, I want to take a look at this real quick because this is to me is a crazy starting point for prep, Brett. <laughs> start awesome. start his prep prep for the fucking Arnold's. Mm. This is crazy, man. It looks like most guys like four weeks out. Yeah. yeah. Like it's because like you still have these lines in your glutes. Like it's not not many guys have lines in their glutes like that far out or in their off season, you know? Yeah, it's kind of like when people said to me, like, oh, you have abs even at 300 pounds. It's like it's I was still fat, but it's like yeah. I still had abs. But you still have abs. Yeah. It's like it's like Brett, even when he's fat. Well, not that this is fat, but even when he's like heavier, he still has lines in his glutes. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Nutty. Is there? I think, a, I think I'm learning that I hold more visceral fat. Isn't is that you mean like around your organs? Yes, I feel like that's where I, I hold more internal fat than I do, you know, like low back and and glutes and things like that. I don't think so. It looks like you hold fat just evenly throughout your body. Like there's a that's lot of there's, there's fat here in your shoulders and your arms. And stuff yeah, like arms that. a little bit more fat. Yeah. So can I ask you a question? And and I don't know if I, I don't want to do this publicly, but I mean, why not? Because people could learn. Is there a reason you're doing your back double like that instead of like opening it up a bit more? Or is that just, no, it was just honestly, he just snapped the picture a little too early. I didn't oh, like, okay. yeah, that, that's all I had to go off of. I'm, I'm sure I opened it up a little bit more elbows through. Someone's like, why are you, pay, <laughs> why are you putting your fists up? It's because I did not you know, crank it through yet, but yeah. Okay. I'm just curious. And, and obviously a little bit more <laughs> inflammation right now. Like in full end. Look at <laughs> this. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, okay, cool. So your prep's going good. You and Ben trained for the weekend? Yeah, he just left this morning early. It was, it was a great weekend, man. It was good to have him out here. Had three or four really good sessions. Um, got a lot of content done, so bring that bring that out to the hostile YouTube. What are you doing? How often does Matt do cheats with you? Probably not any, at all right now, eh? Well, we already had to do one because the weight was dropping so quick. <laughs> so, really, eh? Sorry. What is, yeah, what is, it'll be like probably one or two a week all the way through. What does, it, what does a cheat look like with your prep? Because I know Matt does different cheats for everybody. Yeah, no, no. I just, I think, you know, we're at the point where we just discuss it and we're just going to do the same thing we did last year with the five guys, just the exact same. Every time it's going to be the exact same refeed, just so, you know, there's no variables when we want to carve up at the end. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Logan, what's your go-to burger place? We need to get some, we need to get the, an inside scoop on who you are here. 
Man, honestly, I haven't had a burger for like a cheat meal in it used to be it used to be five guys. Don't you do if it fits your macros? I don't know. You're not even allowed on this podcast. What? Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll your, we'll your Skittles and stop talking to it. Do you do if it fits? Do you do if it, if it fits your macros? I do uh, macro counting. Yes. How does that work? So, are you allowed to give yourself like a piece of cake every night? No, I see. I still have an exact like strict meal plan that I stick to. I just design it myself. Okay, so give me give me a rundown of what it looks like briefly. Um, like for example, this morning I had two English muffins, two whole eggs, and eighty grams of the brownie batter cream of rice from Flavor Game. And okay. then my next, and then my next meal is going to be two hundred and thirty grams of cooked rice with two hundred twenty grams of lean ground turkey. Okay, that doesn't sound like anything crazy. That's what I'm saying. It's still the I, people think that macros. Well, it's because fat asses out there use that as an excuse to just fit chocolate shit in there all the time yeah. when in reality it's just it gives you more freedom let's say you are craving something yeah. then i can switch it up and just cook my own burger if i wanted to and just throw it in there what do you think about that ian i mean it's a fucking diet you know i mean it I sounds like he's following a diet 99 of the time like he's got a written diet he just fucking yeah. does it yeah you know? do you do that when you're prepping i did it the entire prep for the show yeah you could have been so would you so if like so <laughs> no, I could have. And that's not a joke. I really could have. So say you're like three weeks out and like you were just like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like a burger today. I'm going to make my own. You just do it? No, because it got to a certain point where things were so low. I had no choice but to only eat vegetable bowls and lettuce bowls the entire rest of the bread. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had that conversation with Lane Norton. Me and Lane were talking about if it fits your macros because that's kind of Lane's thing when he preps people. But even even Lane admitted that when you get to like three or four weeks out, everything you gets choice. yeah everything gets pretty streamlined because you need to be able to tell what your body's going to look like yeah. from day to day. And if you're changing too much shit, then well, and the thing is with with the prep, like my coach said, he said you can do the if it fits your macros for prep, but you have to make it consistent the entire time. Like I can't That's be right. switching things left and right. That's right. So I ate the same thing every day the entire prep. I just made it to where I liked it. And put the food where I I wanted it, and then it was good to go. Which, to be honest, I think ninety nine percent of people do anyways, even yeah. if they have a written diet. Like yeah. even if they have a written diet, and it's like, okay, your breakfast is eggs and oats, and this they'll like make a protein pancake out of it. Like yeah. you know, I mean, I think this is what most people are doing anyways. It's just you know different. No, different I used work. to. I'm just busting his balls. I used to. I um. As usual, I've actually, <laughs> I've actually told people this like, oh, for a long time since I started working with John because John never cared kind of how I cook my food or most of my meals, like probably pre and post he cared, but the other meals, he didn't care how I rearranged them. So I was like, I kind of do if it fits your macros, but within a set group of foods, right? Like I have like seven proteins, seven or eight different carbs mm -hmm. that I use. And then I kind of move shit around where I want it. So it was a little bit of freedom that way. Um, Logan, how's your life changed? Did you turn pro? <laughs> really, really hasn't changed at all. It's not, it's not like it's <laughs> I don't know why I, I I got the same message all the time. People are like, how what's the difference? I'm like, nothing changes. Okay. Like, back to your regular routine. I mean, the only thing that changed is now I have her and the kids in my life. That's, so you turn pro and you got a turn pro and you got a family. Turn pro and got a family. Look at that. <laughs> they hand, they're just handing them out. No, I asked you that. I asked you that on purpose because most people. That's exactly most people do think that once you turn pro, yeah, change no. everything. Yeah. Well, I mean, when my when my account got hacked, apparently that account said I bought a new car and a house <laughs> with, with all the money that I won from turning pro. So yeah. people were like, "I can't believe you bought a new car and a house." I was like, "Yeah, he me signed either. that ten million dollar Nike contract when he turned pro." You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, they gave me a free Bentley when I when I turned pro. I didn't even yeah. realize it. Yeah. Is there is there money in bodybuilding? Yeah. Logan. I say yes, but not from strictly competing. Okay, Brett. There is if you're good enough. <laughs> it's strictly competing, but no, yeah, you you create your own. You create you use bodybuilding as an avenue as a tool to create your own income. Yeah. You know, in today's age, you know. So I got a DM from this kid who's like having an argument with his dad, and his dad doesn't want him to bodybuild, and he's like, "What do you think?" My dad said, "There's no money in bodybuilding," and blah blah blah. It wasn't the health aspect. His dad just like, "You're not going to make any money." So I wanted to bring it up because I'm like, there is money. It's just not, it's not like the NFL where you're going to turn pro and you're going to get a fucking million dollar contract. You have to hustle, hustle for other avenues to make money. So 
I mean, even prize money alone, I made 150,000 US this year in prize money. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a lot of money for most people. I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah. You can make money even just on your bodybuilding prowess without contracts. Yeah, but wait a minute. Yeah, but I'm trying to talk about like the people who, you know, the kid who may turn pro but may never do well as a pro or mm-hmm. even somebody who just gets to the top national level but doesn't actually turn pro. <laughs> yeah. So you made a lot of money earning with prize money, but there's only, you know, point five percent of sure the people who actually turn pro who are going to make that kind of money well see i had a conversation with a few people after i went pro they're like what are you going to do now with the money that's coming in i'm like you have to realize once you go pro you may never place high again just because yeah. you're pro doesn't mean uh, you may never win a show you may never that, like you yeah. may never i mean the, the vast high. majority of people that are pros don't ever win shows yeah yeah i mean that's why i think my goal was like when i turned pro i was like i just want to win a small show that was my goal because i'm like I know how hard it is to fucking win a show, uh, especially as an open class bodybuilder. I mean, even now with classic, classics fucking the mm. competition's crazy too. So it's, it's not easy to say that somebody can just walk on and win a show. Um, but I meant like for the, for the guy that's not an elite competitor, there's so many other avenues like coaching or personal training or all these other things. So Logan, are you doing anything other than competing or than like, I, ha- I do online coaching, but I only do lifestyle. I don't prep people just because I don't, I don't know that much about prepping people. And I'm not going to pretend like I do. So I only do lifestyle and I'm slowly learning, especially from my girl, because she does that for a living. She does what? So she, she preps people for a living. She does coaching for a living. That's what she does. Cause we were just in Atlanta and she has two girls competing over the weekend. So you're doing lifestyle coaching. What is lifestyle coaching? People that don't compete. Yeah, pretty much just people who just everything. Well, I didn't know if it meant like I didn't know if you meant like uh like mental lifestyle coaching, because that's that's also a thing, right? Like somebody could message it you, is, like, yeah. I mean, in a way, you kind of are, I think, as a coach, you kind of are like a therapist and a mental yeah person in a way too. Interesting. So, I mean, in a Brett, vast Brett, majority, yeah, I guess I am too. Brett, would you let Logan be your lifestyle coach? <laughs> yes. <laughs> If he fits your ma- if it fits your macros and weed, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> He's like, That's look, everybody's playing. Get a bag of fucking weed. Get some fucking get some <laughs> weed. Count go. the Cheetos, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, let's do some. Ian, what's going on with you, man? Anything? Mm, oh, really? No. Oh, I start my off season. I'm starting my off season now. When? It's like this week? Yeah, starting so- off season. So we. Uh, yeah, I'm going to plan to do something in the summer, July, August. I can't talk into doing the Arnold's, eh? <sighs> no. I Look, this past week, I was, like, really dwelling on it. I'm like, fuck, that's, you know, it's 12 weeks. Like, I'm in, still in pretty good shape, and I maintain some, like, good muscle being, you know, off. Like, I'm still 280 plus, which is, like, a pretty good starting point. So, it's not like I'm starting from, like, way yeah. down in muscle or anything. Um, and the prize money is huge. So like, obviously it's enticing, but no, I, I want to make sure I have adequate time to improve before I get back on stage. You know, like I, I think I'm at the point now where like just getting back on stage to like, I, I need to not play seventh at the Olympia again. You know, you say it like it's a bad thing. Well, it's bad if I play seven, three years in a row. If you play seventh every year for the rest of your career, it would be an awesome career. You know that. Uh, yes i I know i I know it's i know it's relative and you everybody always wants to get better yes i understand that but i mean and look i also know that seventh place is relative to the competition if it's different guys every year and the competition's a little different blah 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 you know like if someone like brett is coming in he's better that you know he moves up in there like you know there's different guys every year look i get it um but i mean it also is you know placings are somewhat of a gauge of of success in bodybuilding as well yeah no no of course i'm just saying like it's when you're in it to the depth that you are and Brett is, it's easy to look at seventh and go, fuck, you know, I was like, seventh look, again. I've never been disappointed in my two seventh places. Yeah. You know, even when it was seventh, the second year in a row, I wasn't disappointed in the least of that placing. I mean, I obviously know that, you know, like I'd come second to the Arnold right before and seventh at the Olympia. I mean, I know these are huge placings, Yeah. Um, but there becomes a point where it's like, okay, like we got to, we got to move past this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Uh, I think I a guess- third is, is a little too much for me, you know? No, no, I understand. But I I guess I'm looking at it from the, you know, past my career already looking back. Yeah. And it's like, if I was, let's say, like, it's like, if you take seventh at the Olympia, let's say for fucking 10 years straight, that's a, it's still like, 
I mean, it shows I, consistency, but it doesn't show improvement. It doesn't. Well, yeah, I guess I, I understand what you're saying. I just look at it like, holy fuck. Like that's to me, a career is like a body of work. Right. So I it's agree. like, yeah. So I think that's the way I'm looking, but you're in it still. So your mindset's different. Um, yeah. I, I think I'm less, I think the thing with me is I just want to be, I just want to hear my name in a first call out. That's it. You know, that's such like, a big, it's such a big deal. Eh? People don't realize how important that is. Like the Olympia is the only show, like, I haven't placed outside of a first call out other than the Olympia in like a decade, you know, let me ask you this. Cause I'm curious. Cause I know, I know, I know how I would feel. So I'm just going to ask you and then I'll say what I think. And then I'll ask you guys down there too. Uh, sorry. You're down. You're down there. That's why I said that. <laughs> um, if you were first call at the Olympia, but then you ended up in seventh again, it would, would it still be a victory for you? <laughs> <laughs> It would be a, a small victory, yes. Because, I mean, I still got to be part of that first call-out. Like, you hear yeah. your name called in that first group, which is like, I mean, you, you've you been there at a big show. You know, when you hear yeah. your name or you're moved to the center, like, you know, there's that thrill, like that exhilaration of like, fuck, yeah, like I did it. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so I would still have that, obviously, that acute feeling. Um, but, you know, when you see the scorecards come out, then you'd be like, well, I'm seventh again. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it wouldn't be disappointment because, like, I'm obviously never disappointed in – like if I'm not slipping down the placements, I don't feel disappointment. But if I'm not improving, I'm not like satisfied. You know? Yeah, I get it. Brett, how would you feel? I want that. I want to. You know, I want to be. I want to be happy with it. I'd want to. I want the improvement in the placing. You know, I kind of comes to like if you're somebody that says like, you know, when they make the post after the show, they're like top six or top seven. No, you got seventh. You know, what I mean, like you're just, <laughs> just sending it out. Just like top top to seven. wherever. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I got top, top. I got top nine at the top limit. nine. Like, no, you, you got ninth. You got I've ninth. done. I've done that. I've done that. I was like, I was top ten. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. People I don't always do word it the way to make them sound the best. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, that's why you see people write second, like, you would be like, I came fucking second. You wouldn't be, I came top 10, you know? <laughs> that's why people write like, it was a really deep lineup. I came in seventh. Yeah. And I'm like, no, yeah. no, it was just a lineup. It was just a lineup. Just a lineup. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So that wouldn't do anything for it. Cause I know the, I can't remember if I got first call out at the Arnold's cause I took six at the Arnold's my last year out, but there was only nine guys. So I don't remember if it was like two, you four. were set, you were set, you were center of second call out. You still remember that? Yeah. Jesus. Wow um yeah i don't think i've ever been first call out first call out at a big show the fucking the one yeah, year see, the, go, ahead. go ahead no no go no, ahead no you go the one year at the arnold's i i it's like you're you know when you walk out you're like you're praying you're not i don't want to say praying for it but you're waiting for it there was only one arnold's i remember i can't remember if it was 11 or 12 where i was like waiting for it i'm like i think and it was those were fucking hard lineups like there was branch dennis wolf Evan Senapani, like Dexter, I think was in one of them. Like they were fucking good guys. So, so. so I don't remember which one, but, and then they don't call you and you're like, that's why I think this first call out number is so important. Cause you're like, yeah. when they don't call you in that first lineup, you're like, fuck, they don't see it. Yeah. And you're like, now I got to fucking work my way up or I'm fucked. Like, yeah. So yeah. Logan, you ever, what would you, what would you do if you got first call out at the Olympia? Would that be like a wrap? You, you're like, I win, I get out of here. I can leave. I'm sorry. No, I mean, Going back to what you said, if I got first call out and then didn't place in that top, I'd be completely pissed. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Like, to, me, that like, to me, it's like they said they – I thought they saw it. Then out of nowhere, they changed their mind. So, I'm like, well, fuck me then. Yeah, that's a yeah. good point. That's a good point. I think I would I would have a feeling of elation for the brief period that's where they – That's what yeah, I said. Where they you call you out, yeah. That acute yeah. moment of like, wow, I made the first call out. Then you'd see the scorecards. And you're like, oh, never mind. You know? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be really hard to keep looking – good and like smiling after getting well, the, yeah and the annoying thing about the olympia is you don't even know if you're you're placing if you're outside of the top five you don't even know until like the scorecards come out yeah, yeah, yeah. you know so like yeah. two years in a row i had to like either go find judges backstage like i went and found tyler i'm like dude i'm not waiting for this shit to come out just you gotta tell me where i place yeah. you know yeah yeah so it's either that or you're waiting until you know it comes up on the ipb website like a couple hours later right yeah, yeah. brett how's it feel i've been announced on stage Brett, this is your biggest show you're going into, man. How's that feel? Because I know like how that shit used to feel for me, but you you seem like you're taking it all in stride. You seem pretty like level headed about it. You don't seem like it doesn't seem like there's a lot of pressure on you. How are you feeling about it? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's gonna be a little different this year with with more pressure and you know, people that you know know what I can look like and more hype going into it. But it's just I I always just truly believe it's how you set yourself up 
you know, you create your home. I'm in a good, good environment. I'm in a good, you know, headspace out here, you know, just me and Ivana. So like I said, this is out here in Denver. It's kind of like, you know, it's my hub. It's my box that like I can just get locked in. I don't, I don't overthink things, you know, like it's still, it's still my first Arnold, you know, so actually my expectations are high, yeah. but you know, it's not the end of the world either. So I'm just going to, you know, take it one day at a time and have fun with it. What's your, what is your expectation? My expectation is, uh, is top five is getting that first call out and then getting that chance to be again, you know, whoever's going to be there, we don't know yet, but yeah. being able to be compared to them, just like it was at Chicago, you know, just give me the chance. Let me stand next to Rolly. Let me stand next to Hunter, you know, from, from Chicago, but then yeah, yeah. you know, next, next phase here, you know, I made my improvements. I've, you know, I feel like I, I will be a level up and then now let's see if I'm, I'm good enough to, you know, keep going up those, you know, going up the chain here. Okay. What's your favorite holiday tradition? Logan, go first. Holiday tradition? Yeah, like Christmas tradition. Uh, I don't really have any. You know what I like? Uh, I like pulling the Christmas crackers, you know? What are you talking about? Christmas Do you guys crackers? not have those? Well, I'm not really like, I didn't really grow up celebrating Christmas, so I don't really know what that is. Go, well, go to Google. <clears throat> Nobody knows what that is? Christmas. I know what a nutcracker is. I think it's a British tradition, but ca Canadians do. You'll know what it is, Fuad. Christmas crackers, type it in. It's the things you pull apart with your, like, the person sitting next to you, and then it, there's something inside them, you know? Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. This thing. Show the screen. This thing. Where you, like, everybody, each, each person pulls an end. Yeah, yeah. I've literally never seen that. You never yeah, seen I don't that? think Americans do this. No, I haven't done it. Yeah, I mean, you saw it back there. It was on BBC Science, so, I mean, it's a British thing, yeah. What's in the middle of it? A toy. Do you Anything. Show? Do you share the toy? Like, who gets the toy? Whoever pulls the – so it'll break? I feel yeah. like two dudes oh. put their dicks in both hands and see who wins. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you pull it, and then whoever gets the bigger – so someone will get the center. Oh, it's like a wishbone or something. Wait a second. Exactly. Someone will get the centerpiece and the handle, and some, piece, some person will just get the handle. And whoever gets oh. the bigger side gets to keep it. Got it. All right, so yeah. that's that's Ian's favorite. Logan, what's your? It makes, and it has like a, it has like a strip in it with like a little bit of like, like a like gunpowder, like a like a cap, you know. And yeah. it pops when you pull it apart. It goes like snap, you know. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Logan, Brett, any holiday traditions? I don't. Think I enjoy. I, I enjoy Halloween and doing the pumpkins, even though. I I'm not artistic at all. It's just fun to fuck around and carve a pumpkin. I'm, I'm literally the most unartistic person on the planet, I swear. Yeah, I'm and, up there. Anything for Christmas, Brett? Um, Just in general. Ivana is crazy about decorating the house. So it's a, our Summer's, place is all decorated right now. We got the Summer's advent like calendar. Yeah. You know, the calendar we get. A, at least we. it's not for us anymore. We just get one for the dog. <laughs> Melissa's the same. This is a girl thing. Because, like, even look here. We're just in our condo that we're, like, temporarily living in Florida. And, like, look at this. Stuff, stuff, stuff everywhere yeah oh yeah we got lights all outside the condo and everything that's what, that's what mine is we got that's what she's doing here yeah. we got it decorating <laughs> in the kitchen look at look at look at logan's like one tree it's like one <laughs> tree. like that, right there <laughs> that's it that's it our fucking house has got man we got a massive christmas tree and then we got fucking christmas shit everywhere and now she wants to get another christmas tree she's like we need one in, in the other room too i'm like we, well, we have christmas. a christmas tree we just gotta put it up yeah no, she was like ready to go in November. She's like, I want to do it yeah. now. And I'm like, can we wait at least till December? You know what the crazy thing is? Q is total opposite. She's not big on the whole decorating thing. That's great. You're lucky. Yeah. Like total opposite. She's like, doesn't really that's her idea of our decorating. Man, once December rolls around, my wife is like, let's go shopping. I gotta get ornaments and I gotta get this. And I'm like, oh fuck, man. It's like Melissa just orders it online at least. Like I don't have to partake in that, but oh. we're, it's kind of nice because my birthday's end of November and then hers is first week of December. So we don't really do much Christmas stuff until after our birthdays are done, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. We're yeah. Not, so you don't we're not starting, we're not starting Christmas like trees in like fucking first week of November or anything. Yeah. 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 You check this out. Uh, ben just texted me. Can you see it? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. shit. Is that I his car? He said, I just smashed into a wall going 80. Ben did? What? He chewed that bitch up good. What happened? Damn. I don't know. Well, uh, he obviously just got back to Dallas and he got to pick up his truck, but I don't know what happened after that. I get a good story. I got a good story along those lines for you. Go ahead. We were driving. So the car I have in Florida here, I bought a Golf, a GTI. Yeah. 
I was driving on the fucking I-95 the other day going like 85 miles an hour and my hood flew open. No way. Yeah. Scared the piss out of me. Broke broke my windshield, fucked up the hood, everything. I was going to yeah. ask about your windshield. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you do? Just slow down and get off the fucking highway? Like, well, no, it was fucking one. It was like torrential Florida downpour at the time. Yeah. So I got out of the car and I tried to get the hood back down, but the latch was broken. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't lock. It was just like loose. I'm like, fuck this. If I start driving, this is going to go again. So I just tried to wedge it down as hard as I could. So it would like just at least wedge under something kind of like under the side of the A pillar at the side. So I got it down. Then I just like went to the slow lane, drove 50, like drove slow until I got off the highway. And then I just went to like an O'Reilly's, like a, like an auto parts store and bought a bungee cord and bungee corded it down. Was Melissa with you? Yeah. Fuck man. That would have been scary as fuck. It was. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, the car's got to be fixed. At least you guys are now. okay. I mean, fuck. That's terrible. Yeah, give you quite a fucking like you're just driving. It's just like poof right up in front of you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Brett, did Ben get back to you? Is Brett. he frozen? He's frozen. Is he frozen? Oh, yeah, he's frozen. So. He's either pulling a Nick Walker or he's frozen. Ben's calling me. Oh, there, there he is. is. Yeah, no, I might. Internet guy is kind of going in and Brett, out. You're, ben, you're on the podcast. Well, I'm good now. It's okay. How are you? Are you good? Are you health, healthy, safe? Dude, that's fucking terrifying. Well, how did it happen? I don't know. It's a call. I'm on the freeway. I got in the express lane. I'm doing like 80. And the, uh, the back left blew out. And the whole fucking truck starts just fucking swinging around on me. I'm like, on the express lane, I need to hit that fucking wall. Holy fuck, man. So you're waiting for a tow truck? Um, yeah, because I can't change it because there's traffic coming past me at like 80. Yeah. Out. Yeah. So, fuck those. Denise is, uh, the wife is sorted, man. Fuck, well, at least you're safe. Yeah. Well, I also just realized who your be- I also realized who your best friend is because you text Brett that picture and not me. I can't eat. <laughs> I said, I realized who your best friend is because you text Brett that picture and not me. Well, you don't reply anymore. Okay. <laughs> 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 Brett's stronger, but yeah, that makes sense. All right, listen, I gotta go. I'm glad you're okay. We'll talk soon. Bye. All right. Well, at least he's safe. Uh, it just—it was a blowout on the highway. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Has anyone on the podcast ever been to jail, and for what? I have. Logan, what'd you go to jail for? I think we talked about this, didn't we? We did. I can what'd tell you, it again. What'd you do again? Your shop. Well, well, no, I got accused of shoplifting. <laughs> okay. And then, so the story is, I put myself in a bunch of shit with tickets and not paying anything because I was young and stupid. And I got away with it once, twice, three. Then I was just like, I can get away with it forever. So I got to the point where I was two weeks out from Nationals in 2019, walked across the street to Walmart to get some food. And as I was leaving, they started yelling for me to stop. Because they, they said I was shopping. They said I was stacking chicken on top of each other oh, and standing right. in the self-checkout. Yeah. So then the cop had to, like, put me in cuffs because they got accused of shoplifting until they checked the receipt. Yeah. So once they checked it, he came back and said, hey, man, you're good. We just got to check your IDs or anything on there. I was like, nope. He ran it and I had a warrant out for my arrest, which I had no idea about. So then I was in, then I got in jail. I was in there for, like, four days, I believe. Four days but, for not paying speeding tickets? Yeah, well, it's good. The, the warrant was for a failure to appear because of a speeding ticket. How was but, for- Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. But I never got a letter in the mail to appear in court. So whenever I got to the court, the judge literally looked at me. She goes, well, that happens. That was four was days. Like, so in- I'm in jail because of y'all's fuck up? Jeez. How was four days in jail? It actually wasn't bad at all. I met some really good people. <laughs> <laughs> you're the only person I mean, would, you're the well, only person I'm not even joking. this is how quickly i adapted to it i literally started selling workout plans for food that's a good idea that's a good idea it's a good plug you were hustling i yeah. was so were you I, like I had a, go ahead so you were like the guy from shawshank redemption and but instead of taxes you were writing workouts no yeah. literally so look i came the next morning because i was i got in there around like 3 a.m the next morning some random dude comes to my cell and goes, hey, man, you're the bodybuilder this, this, that just got in here? 
And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so then they started asking workout plans. I was like, well, what yeah, do you have? Workout plan, bro. That's literally the fucking Shawshank Redemption story all over right from there. <laughs> I had awesome. food, though. So ate- how, how was the food there? So I don't know if it's because I was two weeks out or not, but it wasn't that bad. It's because you're two weeks out. Yeah, it had sure. to be. Everything's good when you're two weeks out. Yeah, you know, I was. It was to me. It was delicious. Did you do the show? No. Oh, so you just well, that. I was going to when I got out. My court appearance um, was the day of the show. Uh, but at the time, I told my coach, I was like, "Fuck this!" I did not put all this work in just to miss this fucking show. I was like, "This happens every year. Some yeah. shit happens every year." And he was like, mm, no. "Some warrant for my arrest happens yeah. every year." I go to jail every fucking year. <laughs> you know, same old shit. Do another one. You know. Yeah. <laughs> No, but I wind up not doing it because, well, it was a smarter choice not to do it. Brett, have you ever been to jail? I haven't. I'm close, but got lucky. What was close? One time, I think I was 19. I, I don't know anything. I haven't really told anyone this story, but now everybody will know. But I was like 19. I drove home like from a buddy's house at like 2 in the morning. We'd been drinking. I think we, no, no, we went to a Snoop Dogg concert. There's a Snoop Dogg concert. Oh. I don't know. We went and like drinking and we ended up at my buddy's house. I live like I live, we, where I was from originally, we were out in the boonies, like a countryside. I live like a mile away. So I thought I could just drive home, you know, like probably yeah. had done it many times before just country roads. You see maybe one deer on the way home, whatever. So I drive and I, I shouldn't have been obviously just drunk, like an idiot. It was a good learning lesson, like good life lesson here. Yeah. And then um, I ended up, I, w- I was texting, of course, you know, like an idiot. I was texting, yeah. drunk, driving. Yeah. And I ran pretty much what happened to, brought, to uh, Ben right there. I ran into a bridge. Just, I was going over a bridge. And I just ran right into the side of it. Just fucking, I don't remember, you know. Oh, also, wow. I come to, my tire's like off. I'm not moving. And I'm like out in the middle of the countryside. And this like farmer comes like, he must have heard it. And he came walking up. So I was okay. I'm like, fuck. And the funny thing is I'm like 400 yards from my house oh God. From where my parents did yeah. so i was in college and i was just back for the summer yeah so like 400 yards I'm like, what am i gonna fucking do like i'm freaking out so that guy called the cops or whatever the cops show up and i'm like i just live up the street and so like i call my parents and they actually just they just walk down come find your your drunk son like in this big wreck yeah. and so anyway like they put me in the they put me in the car they put me in the cop car and they're out talking to my parents and and I'm in there, you know, I'm like, I'm almost on tears. I'm scared. Like what, what's going to happen? And so I was on my way to, I was on my way to college to play football. So like, you know, it was like mm. football is about to start. I was about to leave to go there. So this cop gets back into the car and it's just me and him. And he starts talking shit to me. He's just like, so real quick, he's talking shit saying, you're never going to play football again. He's like, you disappoint your family. You're not going to college. You're going to jail tonight. So I'm in there. I'm crying. I start crying. I'm in the back of this car, just fucking crying. Like my career is over. You know, I'm never going to play football. And then he goes, he looks, turns around. He goes, get the fuck out of the car. We'll go home with your parents. And I just Holy like, fuck. okay. And I just walk out and walk 400, this 400 yard walk with my disappointed parents. Cause they're great. They're great people. Yeah. I don't ever disappoint was oh. it felt like I was walking for, for two hours, you know, just that disappointed feeling. And honestly, yeah. like after that, you know, I got my shit straight. I'm like, I'm not driving, drinking and driving. And, but I got lucky there for sure. Did your parents tell the cop to scare you or did he just fucking take it upon himself to treat you like shit for a minute? I don't, I, I don't, I don't think they would have done that, but like, he probably brought it up and they were like, yeah, do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 You know, That's it, it fucking crazy. worked, man. I was like, I was shit in my pants. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ian, ever been in jail? Uh, been in jail, no. What? What is the? Why did you decipher that? Was it? Well, I've been in trouble, but I've never been to jail. Oh, okay. I got. <laughs> I got a, a funny one. I guess is kind of like along Brett's lines, but not really. I remember one when I was. I must have been like 14, 15. So me and my my best my best friend lived next door to me when I grew up. His parents during the summer would go to the cottage for like weeks at a time he was old enough at this point it was like 13 14 whatever they're like you know we're going for the weekend you can stay home kind of thing so he was home they had two cars so his parents drove in one car um, and left the other car there now they were gone for like weeks and we're like 14 15 have no driver's license and we just drove the car around for weeks as if it was like our car (laughs) we'd go to we drive to the gym we'd go to friends houses on the weekend Uh, and then one night we were out uh like i don't know maybe 15 minutes from home like hanging out kind of like in a skate park parking lot. And we were just like chilling with some friends, like a couple of them were drinking, smoking pot and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then it was pretty late and a cop drove by 
and then backed up again and then like shined a spotlight on us and we're like fuck everyone's throwing their weed in the forest and shit <laughs> so then they came by and asked everyone like for their driver's license and their ids and obviously no one had driver's license so then they uh they put us through us in the car and brought us home but then they tried to get a hold of his parents and they couldn't at the cottage yeah so then uh my mom was like what the fuck are you guys doing they just drove us back to our house and she had to let go get the car yeah uh, g- yeah go get the- she had to go get the car with the cops and then uh we got a, a fine but i didn't get like any charges or anything did your mom beat your ass she just thought we were fucking stupid she's like what the fuck are you doing she's like if you hit somebody with no insurance she's like you fuck your life up what are you doing you know yeah yeah that would have been crazy i did a whole bunch of shit like that with fucking yeah. cars mm-hmm. yeah i fucking stole my parents car a bunch of times stole my brother's cars i couldn't fuck i couldn't help i just wanted to drive ever since i was like 12 yeah, yeah. um i went to jail once for one night for for, fu- for fighting i said the guy to the hospital because he touched summer <laughs> nice I just, I, I just blacked out. He, he put his hand on her and I blacked out and just fucked him up. I just, I don't even know if I fucked him up that bad. I think I more like choked him out than anything. Yeah. But he ended up going to the hospital or at least the ambulance came for him anyway. And then the cops took me to jail for being, I think I just got like a, I think it's because I was super fucking drunk Mm. plus fighting. But I remember them taking my shoelaces and shit. And I'm like, that's what you're doing. Like they yeah. went to the, they put me in the drunk tank first. It's like a little like cell by yourself. Mm-hmm. And I remember being in cuffs and I was like, I think I was like 290 or 300 at the time. It was the most excruciating pain ever. My shoulders felt like they were yeah, going to fucking. Shoulders must be oh. I was in this little cell screaming, like, get me out of here. Fuck. This is, you know, take these fucking cuffs off me at least. Like I was just screaming all this shit because it was just the pain was so bad. They yeah. didn't give a fuck. They just. They took my shoelaces, threw me in there, and they left me there with the cuffs on. I'm surprised they kept the cuffs on. They kept the cuffs on until I saw once... double, double cuff you. You once... need to be double cuff. Yeah. yeah, right. Like the two. That's what I would think. But so, um, I th- if, I don't know how it felt like I screamed for four or five hours, but I probably it was probably like forty five minutes. Yeah. But they let me scream myself out, and then they came in after I was done like screaming and yelling for them. Then they came in and took the cuffs off me and threw me in another cell. And then they, they gave me a burger. Which was delicious. And then, you got a burger. I know it was good. <laughs> it was like one of those cafeteria burgers. It was fucking shit. Yeah, no, uh, and like then, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then they fucking sent me home at like six in the morning. They're like, okay, hey, get the fuck out of here. They didn't press any charges. I think as a friend knew one of the cops. Yeah. So, but that was, I can't, I don't know how people do extended periods. It was the worst fucking thing in the world. Like, yeah. I never, ever, ever want to get in trouble for fucking and go to jail. It's like, yeah. It's a control thing, you know? You have no control. Yeah. It's like, I just, I, I, would, I would lose it. Yeah. Just being in that box, I was like, this is insane. Like, I know people have been to jail for a long time and they, they're, they, they talk about it like it's not that big a deal. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I guess some of my good friends have spent like five, six, seven years in prison. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I guess, I guess you get used to it. You get it like a per, people can get used to anything, right? Like, it's amazing what we can get used to. But I just I don't know, man. I can couldn't imagine. So it also depends, like what kind of prison you're in, you know. Like, like if you're in like you know a min security, like for some kind of yeah, oh stupid shit, where you probably like are still fucking like using your cell phone and like yeah. watching UFC on weekends, you know, versus yeah. like someone that's like in hardcore like max security, you know. But for me, it's not it's not like having amenities or anything like that. It's just being stuck. Yeah. yeah. Like I yeah I can't. <laughs> yeah um this is silly this is silly how much could you contribute to a tribe if you were sent back fifty thousand years like right now yeah uh i mean compared to what they could do probably not very much i could i'd stay home with the women and cook yeah i could i mean i know how to hunt at least like i mean i could you don't know how to hunt with a spear Oh, I know how to hunt with a bow, though. You think they had bows 50,000 years ago? Are you fucked? Obviously, they had bows, man. Are you crazy? I need to They've had bows that. for so long. I don't know if you're right about that. The fucking stick and shit? You don't think so? No. Brett, oh, Brett, Brett, look, and now you're uncertain. Again. You were so certain of yourself, and then now you're Brett's not. Frozen, man. <laughs> ben was, uh, Ian was like, yeah, fuck, for sure. Did they? Okay, just you. you go ahead and Google it and see what you get. <laughs> uh, he already he already looked it up. That's why seventy one thousand years ago was what? 
that bow and arrows have been around for 71,000 years. If we go back 50,000 and we just showed up like this, they would go on your, we were like gods though. Brett, go they on your think, phone. Yeah, if they saw us now, they think we were fucking gods for sure. Yes. Brett, well, Brett, they tried to eat us. Wait, Brett, switch to your phone because you keep cutting out. Yeah. All right. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, did they have bows 50,000 years ago? Fuck. Yes. But you weren't sure yourself, so fuck off. No, I wasn't sure, but it still now just proves my point. So I'd be okay. <laughs> I could at least... The thing is, you'd be so fucked because we're so big and used to eating so much, and you'd be eating so much less, you know? Yeah, you just shrink. I could use a bow and arrow too, though. I'd be fine with that. Yeah. What the fuck? I thought I deleted it. Okay, fuck Mary Kill, Whoopi, Goldberg, Rosie huh. O'Donnell, or Ellen. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna Whoopi. Wait, before you answer, you can't extend extend the thing like you can't say well whoopee because i can marry her and she's got tons of money it's just i'm just i'm gonna give it straight up so before you answer brett uh fuck mary kill whoopee goldberg rosie o'donnell or ellen oh god so go ahead okay so i'm gonna marry whoopee goldberg really i think she'd be the least annoying out of all of them so i'm gonna marry her i'm gonna (laughs) fuck ellen and kill rosie That's Ellen, a good, no, okay, that's okay, good, right? Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna fuck. I'm gonna kill Rosie. Yeah, I think we're all gonna kill. Rosie. We're all gonna kill Rosie, probably. Yeah, I'm gonna kill yeah. Rosie, but I'm gonna fuck Whoopi and Mary Ellen. You don't want to marry Ellen, man? Are you crazy? I think I'd marry Ellen because I think I could hang out with Ellen. No, I, I'm pretty sure. So. I'm pretty sure Ellen's a big fucking cunt, man. Yeah, but yeah. she's also I've heard that. But she's also a comedian, so we could probably have some fun and make fun of people and shit. Whoopi is like. <laughs> Super, super left wing. I can't hang out. Oh, is Ellen, man? Whoopi's more so. I yeah, think you true. lose no matter what. And, you and and if we're not even talking about that, let's not even talk. Even I would just rather fuck Whoopi. She's got a big fucking ass. I can like. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. You know, imagine fucking Ellen's little butt. Like it's this little like Ugh. tiny like not even it's not even there. It's like straight. Is 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 Whoopi a a, a lesbian like the other two? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a serious question. I know Rosie O'Donnell this, is, and I know Ellen is. This is, is the she worst. a lesbian as well? This is the worst. I, want, I want my wife to at least like like. That's me. what I was thinking. I was like, if I'm fucking Ellen, she's gonna be like, "This sucks. You're fucking. I don't want to be with you." Whereas well, the next Whoopi, you gotta do it forever. Whoopi, Whoopi might enjoy it. Yeah, Whoopi might enjoy it, but at least you want to be married to someone who's heterosexual, you know? No, because I could. I'd as long that's as it's just a loveless marriage, you know. No, you could be. Fr- you could be good friends. Yeah, that's a that's a loveless marriage. <laughs> not necessarily <laughs> all right brett sex, what are you doing sex doesn't equal love all the time i'm not saying sex i'm saying that she's a fucking lesbian she's not gonna love you like a husband why because she's a lesbian but she could still love my personality yes sure but you're Maybe. not gonna okay ask answer me this could you have a male live in your house and love him like your wife <laughs> no so, so i have to have so, do i have to have sex with him Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it's a challenge. Maybe his goal is to turn her bisexual. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, sure. Maybe I could make her. Man. Maybe I could make her love me. Yeah, it's like one of those girls who wants like fix her boyfriends. You know, she could. She could learn to love me. Ian. Yeah, she could learn. To I, love I don't me. know. I think she's too deep into being a lesbian now. Yeah, I think. I think he's right. All right, what are you guys picking? I'm going with yeah. I think his was. That's what yeah. I pick. I think. I think Logan likes Whoopi. That's why. Logan wants to Logan wants to get a piece of is that why, why is that why no, I just have a feeling you like you know that's yeah, your, I can see your, that that's your style you, yeah I like what what are you trying to say here she likes big black women for sure <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case have you seen Q yeah yeah she's not a big black woman I like Whoopi I like Oprah yeah that's my shit I would definitely marry Oprah overall and it from my experience oh, Oprah. A, from yeah. my experience as a bodybuilder black women seem to love muscle 
So that's I would true. rather be with Oprah. You're, no, she, that's very she true. Would, she older, would love bla- me. older black women, especially. Especially older black they women. They don't hold, they don't even hold their tongue either. No, no. In Florida here, I get it so much, man, with older oh, black women. Oh, Florida's the worst. I love yeah. it. They make me feel great. They're always like, oh, muscles. If you if you're up with all those muscles, honey. Oh, yeah. Oh, if your pants are a little tight in Florida, you are gonna get every cat call possible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brett, who are you Brett? fucking? Who you fucking? Who you fucking? Who you fucking? Who you fucking? I'm, I don't know. Once you started, once Fu had mentioned the politics side of things, yeah. I'm thinking, yeah, is they're, they're all they're, very, they're, they're all, they're all very left-wing good. loonies. They're all no, 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 no. Rosie is right-wing. Like, straight, that's why she's got kicked out of fucking Hollywood and shit. Cause she's no, so she's, she's hard left, I thought. Yeah, Rosie's no. hard left, man. Rosie O'Donnell? Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, I, I thought she was right-wing. I thought she was all like pro-Trump and stuff. No, she's hard left. Which is well, people are people are watching the show are gonna freak out. I don't mind left. I just don't like crazy, crazy left. Far left. Far, all right. Far well, right. they're all the yeah. same. Then we're going. Oh, I don't know who I could spend that time with. Obviously not Rosie. Now I wasn't gonna say Rosie. <laughs> we're marrying Whoopi. We're fucking Ellen, and we're killing Rosie. Then. Now Marian. I think I want to marry Whoopi. What did you say, Marion? Rosie? No. Yeah, Rosie no. is is a liberal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, Marion so, Whoopi. Yeah. Marion Whoopi. Fucking Ellen, because I I don't really want it. I don't I'm just looking at their body types. I don't want the fatter ones. So that's yeah. No, one. you'd rather take like I mean, I definitely skinny. don't want to fuck Rosie O'Donnell. That's for sure. No. Wait no. a minute though. This is interesting. So Brett, you would rather fuck a girl who's like bones than yeah. a fat than a fat girl. Oh man, you yeah. and Ian, you and Ian are on opposite sides of the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. But mm-hmm. Rosie's Rosie's not the kind of fat I want to fuck, you know. But I thought you said fat in general was good. I mean, I, I'd be edging more towards a whoopee than a Rosie, you know. You mean you remember Ro- these, Rosie's like droopy fat? These ladies aren't—they're not like, thick. Just, they're just fat yeah. and saggy. Yeah. yeah, it's different. It's different. Yeah, but Rosie, thick with you, know, you know for sure. You know for sure too that Rosie O'Donnell hasn't shaved her bush since like '99. You know, <laughs> get lost in that thing. Yeah. Ellen, Ellen at least has like a hot wife, you know. Like Ellen's got a decently hot wife. She probably keeps things like groomed down there, you know. That's Maybe not, you never know. So I'm banging on. You think yeah, Whoopi, like you think got, Whoopi shaves her box? Oh shit, my, my camera. You think probably Whoopi not? Sh- but like, I mean, you're marrying her, so you have time to like win her over on that, you know. You talk her into it. Yeah, like at least Ellen, like you know, you've seen her wife. She's got a very attractive wife. I'm gonna, I'm marrying her wife, Ellen. Though. Her wife's not... down there mucking her box all the time. She's probably keeping it decent, you know. I'm marrying Ellen. Yeah, but that's that's a bad choice. No, it's not. I get. I got. She's got the most money too, right? Eh? You know, she's an extreme alpha, right? So she's gonna like you're gonna have to yeah. back down a little bit. Damn. Yeah. No, she's gonna be fucking put you in your place. No, I'm. Well, it's just the tough part. If you're marrying her, you get to fuck her anyway. So like, yeah, not yeah. necessarily. That's true too. You don't. <laughs> I'm gonna marry Ellen. I'm gonna fuck Whoopi. All right. Yeah. Okay. Keep your own. <laughs> uh, things you did later on in your career, but you could, but could make a huge difference if you did them sooner. Mm. Anything? Oh, I haven't yet. Buy, you have um, what? buy all in. Buy all in. Buy completely in with everything, not just half ass. Like my... What happened? Oh, oh he's cool. muted. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say diet. I'm going to say I yeah. had I had better off seasons later in my career, and I focus more on eating. Oh, I know more good food. Go ahead, Brent. One tissue work. I, I didn't do tissue work. Kind of, you know, the first couple of years, like the massage, massage therapy stuff. Yes, yes. Yeah. So get a yeah. good get a good massage therapist or you know sports therapist that can like you know open you up. I think that's like been one of my best things is like as my body has expanded, I've needed that extra work. And like I would say for the last. I mean, sure, Ian's on the same page here. Two or three years, I've had tissue work at least once every week, if not twice. Yeah. yeah. Especially when you're in that, like, expedited growth, you know? Like, you are, yeah. like, you're growing, like, quick, you know? Things can get bound up so fast. You're growing fucking... You're growing too quick, according to some people. Too quick. quick. Yeah. Nick Cajilli says it's too quick. Too much. <laughs> you're going to die tomorrow if you, if you don't stop growing. Back off. Make it, make it take 10 years so that your career is over. Yeah. You only have one good year. Yeah, you, you can only be big by the time you're 40, and that's that's yeah. it. 
That's what I mean. Like if we're going off at scale, I'm gonna be 42 by the time I'm competitive. You grew yeah. so fast. <laughs> you grew so fast. Your voice changed. Don't do yeah. that. Yeah. That's yeah. scientific, scientific, scientific evidence behind that. Yeah. The funny thing is, all the growth hormone made his vocal cords grow. You know. <laughs> the funny thing is, like, the dad, so we, yesterday Ben Ben's voice, we call him. He's it's raspy because he was up here in the in the dry. You know, the dryness yeah. of Colorado. Yeah. And like after three days of hearing his voice gets raspy, you're like, what the fuck's going on? I go, see? So what fucking happens? You're, you're going too bad. <laughs> so serious question, and, and like, don't come at me if this is stupid. From living at a higher altitude like Colorado, did you find it easier to train and breathe when you come to like Florida? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So huh. with, with posing as well. So like, you know, doing like doing three rounds of posing up here is going to be much harder than doing three rounds, you know, down on the sea level. So I yeah. think it's, I, and then whenever you, you know, hopefully you come visit and train with me up here as well. So Ben learned that this past weekend because we did legs and we did back. Yeah. Well, and like when I was in Aspen, when I was in Aspen, which is even higher, it was like the first three days, man. Like I could barely walk. I was like walking five minutes. I was out of breath, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it's a little worse up there, but just wow. like the recovery aspect of like, when you get done with like, you know, your top set or a back yeah. offset. You're out like, of breath like, for five minutes. Yeah. That's why you guys always see me on the ground after a top set. Cause I'm just like, yeah. I'm going to lay down and like, as you know, the quicker I can get this back and recover, the better, you know, so I just zone out and breathe it all in and then get back up and go again. You know, that's yeah. a good benefit though. Come showtime, man. You have a kind of a card up your sleeve that other people don't have. Yeah. I truly believe with, it. Especially yeah. with uh, like Olympia being in, you know, Vegas or Florida yeah. or something where yeah. you're closer to sea level for sure. You know? Yeah. I wonder if Phil, I wonder if I, that's why Phil never looked really tired posing. He yeah. preaches it. You know, he's huge on that. That's one of the yeah. first things that he ever talked to me about is like, you know, we do 25 minutes of cardio here. It's equivalent to 35 yeah. minutes, you know, somewhere else. Yeah. 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 Especially on cardiovascular health for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, things I did later was just, uh, like I said, off season eating. I think I focused a lot more. I used to, when I was younger, I used to think like I would eat my meal and then have some junk and be like, the junk is the added calories I need to grow. And then as I learned more, as I went along, I learned that I should increase those calories from clean food. I'd still, I'd still have the junk when I wanted to, but I made sure I had as much clean food as I could yeah. and didn't try and make it up with junk when I, when I could have made it up with better, better foods. I think mine is don't like I, I, when I was younger and I can't decide if this is good advice or not, because I think it, it laid a good pathway for me. But when I was younger, I like sweat the small stuff way too much, you know, oh, like if, yeah. if a meal wasn't like exactly two hours after the last meal, it was like panic inducing you know yeah, yeah. where now it's like man you know i get my six meals in the day i don't really fucking care you know if i come home after the gym and like i'm not super hungry i'll wait an hour and a half like i don't care you know i think there's a there's a happy medium right like i think i think what you're talking about being crazy like that that's obviously too far but i also think there's people that are like well i missed meal two at one o'clock and i missed meal three at three o'clock so i'm just gonna put them together and have them at okay six I, or seven i would never i would ne i've yeah. never missed like not have my six solid meals ever no, no, I'm uh, just trying to clarify that yes, yeah. timing matters a little bit. Like, I don't think you can just put in, like, if you miss two and three, you can't just go, I'm not you know saying what? missing. I'm not saying yeah. missing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're saying you still got them all in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just saying, like, say I was out shopping, you know? Yep. And it's like, I've been out shopping for two hours. I'm supposed to have my meal now, but I'm going to be home in 45 minutes. Then that would be panic and I need to get something to eat. Now I just don't go fuck, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, like, not sewing the small stuff like that is, like, it's it makes no fucking difference, you know? It's, it's just, like, like take some stress off yourself. It's like Luke used to say, just worry about the broad strokes. Yes. Not about, yeah. not about the fine cuts. Yeah. So a good example of that is, you know, this is a couple of weeks ago. I had a client getting ready for a show. And, you know, at that point we're doing like half, you know, half a, half a tab of uh, a Remedex twice a day, you know, like, so one, one million a day, right up to the show. And he like, he, the next day he like texts me and he's just like, he's like, I'm too, I'm worried. You know, I forgot to take my 0.5 milligrams of the yesterday morning. I can already tell I'm adding more water. <laughs> and, I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, slow down, slow down. Like you'll be, you'll be okay. Like it's, yeah. like, you know, just, just like we. Once you get that stuff out of your head, that like you're not dying when something like that happens. Like it, yeah. that's the, you know, you can mature in this sport. Yeah, the yeah. small stuff like that doesn't fucking matter. You know, I think it's, yeah. I think it's something that you learn as you go. It was like I, I hit a point like that in my career. Probably wasn't early, early, but like I think once I started to realize I was going to turn pro probably like 25, 26, 27, I got a little bit nuts. I got to make sure I do my cardio this way. I got to make sure I do like everything had to be done exactly a certain way. Mm -hmm. And then I learned later on, I'm like, well, you know what? I don't have to do the step mill. I can do the fucking treadmill. I can do the bike. I can do the fuck. So you kind yeah, of everything's not so black and white. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, best rapper named Lil and best song they have. Lil Wayne. 
Yeah, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne, that song he does with uh, Eminem. Which one? Uh, Drop the World? Yeah, that one. Oh, yeah, this is a good song. Mm. It's hard to pick his best one. That's my favorite one that he does. Mm, one of my favorite ones by him is called Three Pete. Is, the, is it Lil Wayne, though? Or are you yeah. thinking? No, no. I mean, but can you think of a better Lil or is Logan? Or do you think Lil Wayne is the... No, I think Lil Wayne's probably the best Lil there is. I agree. Yeah, for Brett, sure. Brett, is there a better, better Lil? No, but I'm going with Lil John, and I'm going with... I had to look it up, but Get Low. Yeah. Oh, that's a good, good one. <laughs> to the windows. To the windows. <laughs> There's a song he does uh, that was in Four Brothers that I like. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More recently, no, I guess that was that too. Lil John, Four Brothers. Oh uh, yeah, what song is it? I think the song might be called Four Brothers. No, it, uh, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Find out what's strong with you. What you gonna do? Shit. Classic. It became a workout song for me for like yeah, it's a good song. Like fucking two months straight. It's all I listen to. What? Screen sharing. Screen sharing has failed. What did I share too many times or something? You're gonna, they're gonna ban my fucking video. Yeah, if, that, if that didn't pump you up, you weren't human at that time. Yeah, that was the shit. <laughs> that was the shit. When is Ian going to coach me to win the Olympia? Who? Never. Never. Who? Never. If you had to I choose don't... one body part to be toddler size, what would it be? If you had to choose one body part to be toddler size, what be? <laughs> Ian's gonna say calves. <laughs> yeah, I'm already there. No, I pick. Right so wait, a body part or like anything? If you had to choose one body part to be toddler size, like, can I say my it? ears? Like, are your ears a body part? My yeah, ears are so. toddler size. I think so. <laughs> He's got pretty small ears. <laughs> I think so. That's actually a good one. Yeah, I'd say my ears. I'm gonna say nose because I have a giant nose, so it would actually fit my face. Oh, that would look. Oh, so I'd say weird. maybe nose. I'm gonna say nose. I look no, you look like you had like a really, really creepy fucking nose job. Yeah, but what would you look like with fucking no fucking ears? They'd be like this. I just big. wear fucking toques everywhere, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Or headphones. Look, you wear those headphones? I just wear those all day. I'm gonna say uh yeah. I'm thinking ears, something ears that, joint related. So like your angles, so like everything looks bigger, like your calves are like <laughs> yeah. you, have, you, have, you, have, you have small ankles or small size. I, I, I have tiny uh, I have tiny ankles and it works. You'd get injured on. so much, though. You'd get what? Uh, you get injured so much. Yeah, they're toddler I think, size. <laughs> I think ears is a good one. Ears. I have small ears. ears. Me too. I think ears is the best one. I was going to say forearms. Then your arms would look giant, but then you'd probably look really stupid, too. No, then you'd look like Kai Green. Yep. I knew you were going to say that. I'm like, I kind of teed it up for you, but I'm like, maybe he won't go there. That's the first person that. pops in head, though, when you think yeah. of small forearms. I got to think about Hottie kind of has small forearms. Yeah. Yeah. I never noticed that. But at least Hottie's arms, at least Hottie's arms are shorter, though, you know? Yeah. 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 Uh, what about giant size? Giant size? I mean, is the obvious answer to pick your penis or is like, <laughs> or am I going to pick my calves and like pick the even more obvious answer? Uh, I'm not going to pick penis because. There's a certain amount where it's too much. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to pick. I don't know. The only body part I think you can be giant sized and not too big arms. is arms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think How about back? Arms. Yeah. You could have a giant back too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. even almost anything, man. Like you could have fucking like Randy sized quads. It's going to look sick. No, you know? I don't think that's true. I think shoulders and arms are probably the best. I think if you had a giant chest and then you had small shoulders and arms, it would look fucked up. That would look weird. Yeah. yeah. But if you have giant limbs, it always does better than giant torso. I'm picking calves. I'd like fucking just like 30 Fank Hauser. calves. Fank Hauser calves. Yeah. yeah. Bigger. Bigger? <laughs> Bigger? <laughs> um, do you really think bodybuilders would look the same but smaller without gear? No. No. No? No. Why would they look different? Well, answer me this. Do you think your physique would have looked the same as it did at the end of your career with, if you'd never used steroids. What do you mean? I would look healthier. Is that what you're implying? You just, you never would have got to any point where like your midsection could have gone or anything like that. You would have never got to that point. You would have looked 
smaller. So you would have stayed closer to the beginning of your career the entire time. So you're saying my midsection would have stayed the same size. It would have stayed. You would have, as a whole, everything would have stayed. Everything smaller. would have been smaller. Yeah. 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 yeah I could see. So I, I think it would potentially make prettier, smaller physiques. Yeah. I could agree with that. And no one would have like the same level of like hardness and dryness. That's for sure. That's for sure. Do you think a lot of the Mr. Olympias would have been the same saying if no one ever used gear? I want to say yes, but then the whole hyper responders thing comes into play. And then you're like, okay, I I look at it this way. Do I think someone like Rami, not that I'm saying Rami pounds drugs, but I don't think that's a physique that without drugs would have ever won Olympia. I I think that, wait a minute. That's such a, that's such a, like, that's an obvious statement for any Mr. Olympia though. No, because I don't think Phil or Brandon or like these genetic smaller shapely guys, I think those guys could have still won Olympias without drugs if everyone wasn't taking drugs. I think Dexter would have won more. I agree. That I 100% agree with. I don't think that's a fair statement. I think Flex Flex Wheeler would have won more too. Oh, Flex Wheeler would have been up there for sure. Well, I don't know. Actually, I don't agree with that because Ronnie was really good naturally and I don't think... Yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. You know? I think Ronnie would have been just as dominant. You're natural. you're literally implying that some of the guys are only massive because of drugs. Maybe. No. <laughs> do you not know what I'm saying though? I do know what you're saying, but I don't think there's any basis for it. Because like it's look at someone your, like it's just your opinion. It's there's no actual basis. There's no basis. No, yeah. there's no basis. There's no basis. <laughs> but like, like looking no- at someone like Rami, I don't like when you look at him when he was an amateur or stuff like that. His physique was not nearly as impressive. And I don't think it would have continued on that freaky way naturally. I think it would have stayed a little more muted, not as shapey, you know? See, I'm more of the belief that if you took away all the drugs, the same guys that are at the top would still be at the top. I believe that a a large majority would, but I think there would be outliers that wouldn't. And I think certain guys would fall into that category. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like if you have the genetics to put on massive amounts of muscle to the level of Rami, that's not just drugs. I, I'm not saying it's just drugs. I'm just no, saying, but I'm saying it's not as much a big. Would be, a, I think when you're talking about guys that are 300 plus pounds on stage, there's a lot more variance of change when you take away drugs. Like no one can get even close to that naturally. No, no, know? I know. But I also think when you're talking about somebody who's 300 pounds on stage, that's somebody who's genetically gifted for building muscle mass. So that person is going to build more muscle mass than anybody else without drugs also. I, I agree, but it's, yeah. it's still farther away from homeostasis for anyone, you know? Oh, I'm not saying they would be anywhere near the size they are. Yeah. I'm just saying if you're genetically blessed with the, with the, like a Dorian Yates where you may not be pretty, but you could, you have an easy time putting on a ton of mass, mm-hmm. you're still going to put on more mass than the next guy. So you're still going to be bigger, right? Like whether you took the drugs away or not. Unless you start adding the whole argument of some people have are hyper responders and they respond better to drugs and blah, blah, blah. And I just, I still think the genetic, the genetic component of adding muscle mass is going to be the same. So Dorian Nates is still going to be the biggest guy. Rami is still going to be the biggest guy. Like those guys are still going to be the biggest guys. Uh, I agree with that to an extent, but see, then there's a point where, Brett like, comes in to be right about flex, where I think that Dorian with less muscle versus a, a, a shapely flex wheeler with slightly less muscle would be maybe in flex's favor. But you don't know because he's not. You don't know if it's, but you don't know if it's slightly less muscle. Let's say flex wheeler at his best was two twenty two twenty on stage. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying the variance, is, the, the 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 gap still might be the same. Yeah. yeah. So like Ronnie Coleman, natural, looked incredible, and still would have been. 30 pounds or heavier than flex wheeler if flex wheeler was natural yeah so i still think ronnie still would have been mr olympia uh, yeah i agree yeah yeah anyway. um who are some new guys that aren't talked about much that you think have the most potential in the next five to ten years i mean with social media now who's not talked about you know yeah like, I mean, years. like you could say someone like Brett because Brett's new to the scene, but like when the Arnold's coming up, I think a lot of people have Brett as a front runner for the Arnold. So it's not like he's underrated or not mm-hmm. talked about, you yeah, know? Yeah. 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 You're right. People can get out there a little bit easier than they used to. 
Well, unlike you nowadays, got- like either of a social media or competing, someone will find out who you are pretty quick. You know, yeah. we're going to talk, talk about the Arnold's like Brett's not here. What do you guys think about Reagan starting today's prep for the Arnold? How do you think he's going to do with Milos? I think he'll be second place to Brett. <laughs> you yeah. Think, you think Brett's going to win the Arnold's? I believe Brett will win the Arnold. Yeah. Who's all doing the Arnold so far? I wonder about Brandon Curry. That's why that's the only thing that's holding me back from you saying think that. Brandon's going to do the Arnold. I think he's going to jump. In. <laughs> what? I don't listen. Nobody take this as like uh, any inside information. This is just me guessing. Speculative. I, I think Brandon is going to jump in because I think, I mean, fuck, it just makes sense. You, you, first of all, the prize money is 200 grand. And then you have nine months before the Olympia. So you have time for a break. You have time for a little bit of an off season. And then you have time to get ready for a it show. It really again. depends what the Kuwait guys, if they think that he can still beat Ramy and win the Olympia, because if they think he can still win the Olympia and get that title back, I think they'll put all their ducks into that. I think if they're just looking to win more titles um, and win some prize money for him personally, then I think they'll put him in the arm. Okay. Well, let's look at it subjectively. Rami wasn't at his best last year and Brandon was improved, but also maybe could have been a little sharper, but Brandon was more improved and Rami was less and Rami still beat him. Still lost. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, if I'm Brandon and I'm formulating my plan, I'm like, okay, well I was better and I still didn't beat him. Maybe I should take the 200 grand and then go back to the Olympia anyway and try and, you know what I mean? Like well, I, I understand both sides of the coin, but yeah, I also understand that a lot of the guys out of those like top three, top five guys, put most of their chips in for the Olympia, you know? Yeah. 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 And I also think that, I mean, Brett was a very close second behind Hunter who ended up placing fourth at the Olympia. I think Brett is going to have continued to improve more than almost anyone. You know, I don't really think, it'll matter a ton like for most other people you know anyone outside of the top five olympia i think brett will beat i have to be harder on you than everybody else brett because you're my athlete so people are going to think i'm favor giving you favoritism if i say you're going to win so i'm just being trying to be as completely objective as possible but also there's also william bonak i think brett would beat william bonak no problem yeah really yeah i think brett could potentially beat william bonak but it's not going to be no problem I think it'll be by the time March comes around. I don't think it'll be no problem, but I think it will be a concise victory. Yes. I honestly think that by then, and no offense to Bonnack, not that I, he probably watches this, but I honestly think that by then that Regan could be second over Bonnack. No. I don't think you're giving Bonnack enough credit. Well, I mean, Bonnack beat me at the Olympia. I mean, I'm giving him some credit. I mean, you know. No, you're just making yourself look worse. <laughs> oh. No, I'm just being realistic where I think trajectories are. I think that Brett is like this. I think Regan's like this too. And I think Bonnack's kind of like slowly declining. You know? I agree. I agree with both of those things, but I don't think the rates are as drastic. You don't think it'll be do. quick enough. I don't yeah. think the rates are as drastic as you do. I don't know how much size Brett has put on, but Bonac is really fucking thick and round. Yeah, but Bonax lost a lot of legs. He's not nearly as impressive from the back, where Brett is pretty good from the back, and his conditioning is really sharp. I don't think he's lost a lot of legs. I think he's lost a little bit of leg, which could he could get back depending on what his training was like for the Olympia. Maybe, yeah. Right? I think Bonac, if Bonac does it, and if Brandon do it, they will obviously be Brett's biggest competition. I think... Look, I think if Brandon's Brett- in the show, if Brandon's in the show and this is nothing against Brett, I believe Brandon would win the show. Um, and but I think anyone else other than that, I think that Brett could beat. I think Brett is ahead of Regan at this point. I agree. Uh, I don't know what Milos is going to do with Regan. I mean, that could be something really impressive, but I think Matt is just as good a coach as Milos. And Brett, I think, has put on a ton of size since the last show. Um, is there anybody? Else? Well, there's also I don't think uh, there's there's Akeem, Sergio Kuklo is doing it. So Kuklo could Kuklo is, actually, is, you know, it's interesting. It? I think I heard he's doing it. Yeah, I think Kuklo would be an interesting matchup with Brett. I agree. Mm-hmm. They have a they have a I don't want to say similar physiques, but they have a similar style of physique, I guess. Um, I don't would, agree there, but I think that would be a good showdown for sure. Yeah. Well, I just mean a more. Long, I think it would be similar to like when I competed against Steve. It's like a good matchup. I think Brett's in the same boat as that, you know. Yeah, but I don't. Brett doesn't have your kind of physique. Brett is more of an athletic. Th- no, no, I'm not saying it's the same kind of physique. Yeah, I'm just yeah, saying yeah. it's the same kind of comparison in terms of like, co- like competitiveness. I know? guess. I guess what I meant was like when you compete with Kuklo, to me, it's muscle versus aesthetics. Versus when Brett competes with Kuklo, it's aesthetics. 
together. Yeah. Like they're both, that's why I meant they're similar uh, in structure that way. But uh, Kuklo would be a challenge depending on how he shows up condition wise. Um, yeah, it's going to be a big show. It's going to be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see, Brett, how far you've come in a short period to Chicago because it looks like you've changed a lot. So I think everybody's kind of. But I mean, even if, even if you're going to base it strictly just off Chicago, that's going to be a physique that's competitive with the Arnold, you know? I don't think Chicago beats Bonac. <sighs> no, it'd be you, close. You, you forget the photos. We just looked at them last week. Hunter Hunter was rounder in the shoulders, rounder in the chest, round. You know what I mean? And and I think um, I think I think Bonac is going to have that same roundness. It's the reason I think Brett may potentially be Bonac is because of the added size since Chicago. Yeah, I don't think Chicago Brett would be able to beat Bonac. Yeah, no, maybe. Yeah, Brett, what do you think about that? I agree with that statement. You agree, Chicago. With that? Yeah, Chicago Brett would. It, it's that extra eight to ten that I'm going to bring that needs to. Show that improvements, and, and that's nothing. That's kind of, it's nothing against the Chicago. Like right. I, I thought, your physique was amazing, in Chicago. It's nothing against your physique in Chicago. I just, like you said, that added five, ten pounds. Yeah, and just more time. That's all you know. That's all it is. I, I believe for me, it's just more time. Logan, what do you think? You're sitting there quiet. I'm just listening to the conversation. What, what you got? I'm not me personally. Starting with Bonac, I don't think he could beat Brett. Okay. Because I can't even physically remember what he looked like at the Olympia because he didn't impress me. Hmm. I think ever since he started placing second, he started on a slow decline from there. Well, you know what? Let's let's remind you. I mean, go right ahead. Let's let's remind you, young man. <laughs> so we can have an honest discussion. Like I used to be a big fan of him. I don't think he's made actual improvements in quite some time. Well, I mean, I don't think he's made improvements, but he's he was third at the Olympia. Like there's not much to improve on when you get to that level, right? Uh, I don't know. You're still you're still third, so I guess he could be. Well, just because you're third, it doesn't mean. Wait a minute. This is an important discussion. He's got a second recent photo. Wait, wait a second. Just because you place third, doesn't I get mean, that. Doesn't mean you can improve in placing, but it doesn't mean your physique has room for improvement. Okay, fair enough. Right? Like you could have maxed out your physique and been tenth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like your physique maxes out. Your physique maxes out. Doesn't matter where you placed. Uh, okay, so this is this is the Arnold. So this is obviously mm-hmm. when he was still peaking. Uh, let's see what the Olympia 2020 Olympia 2021 Olympia. Oh, sorry. Um, let me see. Is this, this is a 2020 Olympia. Yeah. His legs are a little down in size there. He's not as full around as he was. Yeah. I mean, I guess I could, I could see, I could make the argument for sure. I could make the argument for sure. But then you got to also say, is he going to show up like that again? Right. Uh, he, he obviously knows he was off. Yeah. This doesn't look. Oh, this is a twenty Olympia. That's a really impressive physique, man. He's impressive for sure. He's very, very impressive. Yeah, but I do agree that uh, the last. This is the last. This is twenty twenty, actually. Yeah. See, legs are down, chest yeah. is down, arms yeah. are down a bit. Yeah, it shows showing signs of age a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And he's not getting any younger, you know. Yeah, I, I'm listen, I'm I'm right there with you. I, I don't think he's I don't think I'm not trying to say like uh it's not possible for Brett to be Bonac. I'm not saying that. I'm saying he'll be the he'll be the biggest challenge if Curry's not there. And I don't think it'll be easy for him to beat him if he beats yeah. him. I mean, obviously it's not easy for anyone to beat Bonac. He's been top five at the Olympia multiple times. Yeah. But I think Brett will beat Bonac. Um Shit flavor, shit flavored protein powder or shit flavored peanut butter? Shit flavored protein powder. Shit peanut butter. Peanut butter. I, I consume more protein powder than peanut butter, so I wouldn't. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather. me too. I don't. I have. I, I use Professor Nuts every single day. You're supposed to use fucking ISO H1 every fucking day, you idiot. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> I, I use more of that than I do actual I'm just, protein powder. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> Brett, yeah, no, I'd probably do nut butter. Yeah. Brett, you if do- it's. You do protein powder if, every single day, right? Every- yeah, that's what I mean. So if we're going off like what we use the most, and yeah, obviously the peanut butter. But if, it, if you had to do it equally, I'd probably do the protein powder because you can get it down quicker. You know, yeah. just you know, clog your oh, nose and chug it. You know, that's saying if you point. had to do it, because you can you yeah, can drink some disgusting that, stuff. Logan. Well, actually, hold on. If it's shit flavored protein, just put the peanut butter in there and mask the shit. No, that's you true. can't mask the shit though. You get now. You just have shit flavored peanut butter. The thing is, uh, like, yeah. there's not there's not really. Help. 
there's not really any other choices of like drinkable protein like that, like fast digesting protein, where there's a bunch of other choices for good fats, you know? And peanut butter is not even really a good fat. Also, I think Brett's point, Brett's point is just probably the strongest. When you eat peanut butter, it stays in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can't just swallow it and it's gone. It's going to like linger and it's in your teeth and shit. Yeah, but see, I'm under the assumption that if it tastes like shit, I'm going to cut it out of my diet, you know? (laughs) Yeah. 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 I'm not going to be like, oh, peanut butter tastes like shit. I'm going to tough it out. I'm just going to not eat it, you know? If you win the lottery and never have to worry about money again, would you still compete? Yeah. That makes competing better, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't Logan. have to do anything. Logan? Say the question again. Sorry, I spaced out. If you <laughs> won the lottery and never had to worry about money again, would you still compete? Yes, because I still love bodybuilding. So now say you have the money to supply it. You're 30 years old. You win the lottery. You still bodybuilding? Yeah. How much is the lottery? As much as you mil. want it to be. 15 mil. Let's say 15. I think I retire. Really? You love bodybuilding more than anybody. I would still train. I just wouldn't compete. I don't believe you for a second. You're a liar. <laughs> uh, if you could. You're getting up there with fucking... 60 units of GH and you just fucking ready to roll Loaded to the gills. Fucking yeah. I gotta... <laughs> yeah. He's got fucking with every meal, 10 units of fucking humotrope, you know? Like... <laughs> no, I don't. I got I'm going to tell you this, the truth about it got harder to suffer. The more successful I got. Yeah. I mean, that might've coincided with injuries and age and a lot of other things, right? Like, <laughs> Cause all those things kind of started to happen at the same time, but it, I was a lot hungrier when I didn't feel like I had made it not on stage, but like at home, you know what I mean? Yeah. Once I felt like I kind of had figured out my life at home, it made it harder to fucking, um, to suffer through like the way I did when I was like in my twenties. Mm-hmm. So I I yeah. I don't yeah, it's weird. that's why like fighters always say like it's harder to stay the champion than it is to become champion. Mm-hmm. So I think when you have when you have all the trappings of like if you become not that I ever got to that level, but like if you ever if you become a champion in fighting and you have like bigger contracts, you have more money, it's got to be harder to get up in the morning and get your I mean, face. Shit, man, I I see this with Chris all the time. You know. Yeah. Right. Like, that's a good example. No, no one's no one's making money like Chris in this, in this industry. I can tell you yeah. that. And it yeah. gets more and more difficult to, to keep that motivation and to want to compete and put yourself through that bullshit when you're like, I'm making fucking 40 K a month. What the fuck am I care about this? Yeah. For, you know? Yeah. 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 That's a perfect example. I mean, he's, and not, and he's already won the championship twice or th- sorry, three, three times, times. Yeah. three times. So like, he's like, I've already done it and I got my living and I got my job figured out and yeah, I mean, yeah, he's an owner with Raw now. He's got a million companies going on. Why the fuck does he care about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, another ex- the main example of that is uh, Conor McGregor. He's yeah. bigger than the sport now. Like, so, like, yeah. how, how you know, and how he, good he, is- he obviously loves to fight, but, like, how do you get yourself ready like you used to when you wanted to be the two-time champ? You know, but that's he's a great, not, yeah. He's not there. He's not there anymore. But that's a great example because how good has he been since he became two-time champ? I mean, he hasn't, of course. Yeah. he's lost, he's only won one of his last four or five fights. Did you watch the fight this weekend, by the way? No, I missed it, man. They are awesome. awesome. Amanda awesome. Nunez got her fucking ass I know. crazy. I know. I was so fucking pissed off. It's like the one weekend I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try to skip the fights. Me and my wife are watching a movie. I'm like, oh, I'm going to skip the fights tonight. It turns out to be like the best card ever. No, I could have never. Look, I watched Amanda Nunez fight every time she's fought. And I going into every fight, you're just like, she's going to beat the shit out of this girl. You don't yeah, she's going to punch her out. Yeah. It was not it was so opposite of what I expected, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you see that guy that bet three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars on Nunez just oh. to win, just to win twenty-four thousand? Yeah. So Holy he did shit. the money line, and so he ended up losing three hundred twenty-five <laughs> trying to win twenty. Because you think do you, that? Because you think with Nunez that is like a signed, sealed, and delivered bet. Yeah, you know? he just thought it was a done deal. Which I mean, yeah. I know odds it wise it was. Yeah, odds wise it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if you have that kind of money to lose, wouldn't you just bet bet forty on Pena? And fucking, and because you thought that was way too much of a long shot that you thought you're just going to lose your money. You rather risk 324 to win 25 because you think it's guaranteed, you know? Who the fuck risks 324 to win 25? That sounds so bad odds, man. Fucking bad odds. That's what it is. That sounds so stupid, though. Like, if I had $350,000, I'd be like, well, I could win 25 grand. 
Yeah, I know. It seems like, so minimal. On that. Like, um, if you could do anything about how you lived out your career, what? Oh, if you could change anything about how you lived out your career, what would you pick? Have more fun. I'm still starting mine, so I don't really have an answer yet. What do you think moving forward? For me? Yeah, what do you want to make sure you don't lose sight of? <sighs> well, for me, the biggest issue that I would struggle with, and I've talked to you about it, is my food. Yeah. I struggle with eating bullshit for some reason like food I, that's my coping mechanism if i'm going through anything i just immediately go to food that's what i do so that's it's like do. so it's like that's I, what I, do. I have to get that under control like a lot especially moving forward if i want to be anywhere near competitive in the pro league you guys don't do that ian and brett you guys don't do that eh you're not like food. i'm a i'm a i'm a don't eater if i'm stressed not i eat uh, a lot of things. yeah i'm the opposite man i yeah. fucking reach for whatever's in the fridge and it doesn't matter what it is i'll just eat it yeah, Melissa's the same as you, though. You know that. Yeah. Dude, Logan, it's sometimes it's, I'm eating stuff. I'm like, why am I even eating this? Oh, yeah. I've, I've come up with the crazy concoction of shit that I'm like, why? Well, who does this? You would think I was high, but I'm not. Yeah. Brett, you? Emotional eater or no? No, no. Not much so, of a eater. So you guys like, like these things? Yes. Yeah, I've had those. Some of them. Yeah. Um, Brett, you don't get, like, upset or bummed out or something that I eat? No, I, I'd be the opposite. I'd be like, Ian, I'd be more, if I stressed out, I probably want to eat. Yeah. Really? It's like if, so hard for me to eat when I'm stressed or anxious. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm a, fuck it. If I get in a fight with huh. Summer, if I get in a fight with Summer, I'm like Uber Eats and fucking a pizza. Is she the same? <laughs> Is she an eater too? No, opposite. Yeah. She won't eat for like a whole day if she's pissed off. Damn. Yeah. Uh, Ian, if you could change anything about how you lived out your career so far, what would it be? Have more fun? That's what you said? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it's and like one. not place so much like value. Like my my bodybuilding is not my value as a person. You know, like not based so much of like my worth as a person on my credibility or my prowess as a bodybuilder. You know. Yeah, I think it's hard. People are like people. People sometimes say like, um, you shouldn't get your self worth from your body and image and all this stuff. And I'm like, I think if you're a professional bodybuilder, it's kind of hard not to tie your identity, yeah. right? Because your whole life is based on and it just probably sounds silly to soup to people that don't understand what we do but your whole life is really based on eating training and how you look morning and night so when mm -hmm. someone tells you if a judge tells somebody important not just some guy off the street but if a judge tells you you look like shit you're like or it doesn't give you the placing you want it devalues you personally because you're mm -hmm. like that's i put my whole body and soul into this creation and you're telling me it's not good enough yeah so it's hard not to tie like your self-worth to your fucking physique mm. when your physique means everything. Yeah. I mean, if you can, that's a good one though. If you can separate them. I can't. I don't think anybody who cares, dude, you know, it's funny. The conversation about sense, people always say bodybuilders are sens sensitive and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I think when you care, the people who say that stuff are people that don't have anything that they really truly care about. Yeah. Right. Cause I think anytime you care about like this thing, like I made this thing, I nurtured this thing, I built this thing. You're going to have an emotional. Connection. Yeah. It took me five years to be 10 years to be 15 years, whatever. If someone tells you it sucks and that person means anything to you, or if numerous people tell you it sucks, it's going to affect you. It doesn't yeah. fuck. It. And if, if you don't care about something, if you have no commitment to anything, you've never, you've never put your life on the line for something. And then somebody says something to you, of course, you're not going to be sensitive. You don't give a fuck about anything. Yeah. So when people say bodybuilders are sensitive, I'm like, of course they are. They're, their entire being is about this thing they're doing. And then you're telling them it doesn't matter or it's shitty or whatever. Like there's no way for it not to be. Yeah. It's passion. Brett, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Brett, is there anything you would change or look like moving forward? Don't want it to have affect your career. Or, um, I talk about this a little bit, you know, we, I've had these conversations and like, I came to the conclusion on that. What, what I would have done different from the start is I would have started competing earlier. Yeah. Um, I don't think people realize that I'm actually, I'm 32 years old. Yeah. So like, that's why I have these videos and shit. They're like, Oh, I did this in two years. He's like, he's young. I'm like, no, I'm 32. Like I've been doing this for a while, but I didn't start competing until I was 28, yeah. you know? So, but, but with that said, here's, this is where I go back and forth on is I don't, I don't really wish I would have started when I was like 18, like Jay Cutler or something. 
Yeah. Because I, I had those experiences when I was like 21 through 25 that I, you know, those life experiences and what I did. And like, I got a lot of shit out of my system, like drinking and things like, you know, partying. I'm glad I had those times. I got it out of me. Cause I, I feel like that created who I am today that I don't need those things. You know, I have no ambition to like, you know, I don't, I don't need to go to social events. I don't need to party. You know, I'm locked into what I'm doing now with my career because I had that fun. You know, I had those experiences. Yeah. So it's not like, I don't want to eliminate those things. I just want to cut back where I started the competing wise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, you had to answer. I would, uh, if I could, if I could snap my fingers and change anything, it would be my mental state. Because I think that. I think I would have been, and this is not to fucking pump my own tires or fucking whatever, pat myself on the back, but I think I could have been a way better bodybuilder competitively. If you had I, more control over your than I was based on my mental state. Because my my you know, I, I see, and I don't want to name anybody, but there's somebody I can think of today that would be better if his mentality for bodybuilding was better. And that was me. Like I got in my own way. Let's just put it that way. I got in my own way. Like my anxiety would take hold of me. The pressure would get a hold of me. Can you name names? I don't think it's a secret to anybody. I mean, like Cedric, Cedric's mm-hmm. been on the podcast. Oh, Cedric, yeah. Cedric's talked about having anxiety and things like that. And I think Cedric st- struggles with it a little bit leading into shows. And personally, I think if Cedric didn't get in his own way, he might be more consistent or a better bodybuilder altogether. And I'm only saying that based on my own experience, because I know it fucked with me. So if I could go back and change anything, it would, it would to be to uh, have more fun with bodybuilding, like Ian said, but more in a different way, like not put so much pressure on myself. Like every prep is the end of the world and every show is going to, if I don't do well at the show, that means my life is over. And uh, yeah, I would have just been a little bit more relaxed in my approach. And I think I would have been what a better, I mean. That's better what body. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. We'll do a couple more. If you had the power to add any minor inconvenience to the lives of your enemies, what would you, what would you do? For example, both sides of the pillow are warm. They always hit red lights. Their protein is always clumpy. Oh, that's a good question. I can't uh, think of an enemy. I mean, there's a lot of people I fucking dislike, but I don't know if I have an enemy. Inconvenience. Just like, I don't know, some kind of fucking itchy rash. Or every, something. every time you go down to take a shit, and you go to wipe your ass, there's no toilet paper every single time. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And you got to go, you have to go across the across the house to get another roll. <laughs> you know how pissed off I'd be every single time? Every time. <laughs> you basically have to shower every time you took a shit. <laughs> you can't just stand up and walk around and then go I'd back. I'd do that and- anyways. Oh, okay, let's not get in. Please, Here we go. <laughs> I got. I just want, I'd like to have one episode. I'm really sorry, empty. there's no shit. That was, that was my bad. I brought the shit back in. No, it's okay. <laughs> uh, Logan, did you think of anything? I I'm trying to think of that toilet paper one was good. A minor. What would you do, Fred? I don't know. I'm trying to think of a minor inconvenience that I, not being able to find the remote control, ever. Yeah, that one sucks. I hate being yeah. sitting down and then grabbing the remote control. Or actually, no. Does any of your wives do this? And Melissa's like the queen of this, of cleaning things up without knowing where they're putting things. Oh, you said yes. that like, before, yeah. Our house is like spotless all the time, but then I'll be like, hey, babe, where'd you put the car keys? You'd be like, I didn't touch the car keys. And they'll be like up in some fucking cupboard. Like, you know, I'm like, why the fuck did she, they go there? She's like, well, I was just cleaning up. You left them out. I'm like, that's not fucking cleaning up. You know? yeah. yeah, the toilet paper is a good one. That's yeah. like, I can't think of anything besides the toilet paper. That's hard to beat, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, last one. Uh, who's a person in the industry that may not be as vocal or no? Oh no, that's not too bad either. If you could transform into any animal on command, on command, which animal would it be? P.S. Ian is my favorite bodybuilder ever. Wow. My man. <laughs> Fuck all of you. He likes me. <laughs> Fuck this show. Uh, I don't need you guys. I'm too famous. You're gonna go start your own. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Start go my ahead. own podcast. Go ahead, Logan. What animal? I'm trying. Well, I'm going through a few of them in my head that I would love I'd to be. I'd be a bear. So wait, if, be, you could, if you could be any animal on command? Yeah. Well, it's I mean, got to be something that can fly for sure. Yeah. I, I want to be something that can fly. Easily. Oh, awesome. it's, it's, it's got to be something that we can't do, you know? So you gotta, okay. like dolphins. Either a dolphin or like a fucking albatross, you know? I was going to go with a bear. Man, mine sucked. Bear? What, do you want to eat fucking out of the local dump? Like, what do you want to do? 
like a grizzly bear. Can you imagine being able to fly anywhere you wanted on command? Yeah, man. Or okay. just like hop in the ocean, fucking, you know? Man, that'd okay. be perfect. Okay, I'm maybe I'll do this. Yeah, I'm gonna go with a bald. But I want to be like a big ass bird that I eat other things. Yeah, that's a, that. a bald eagle, man. Big yeah, fucking... that's what, that was my first thought, but now I'm gonna change it with you. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, do you know how? Have you seen? Do you know what an albatross is? How big those fuckers are? Ah, uh-huh. they're they're huge. They're the biggest bird. Look at those. Yeah, these oh, fuckers shit. are humongous. Yeah, I go with a bald eagle. It's cooler looking. Yeah. Uh, or. Yeah, I'd go with a killer whale. They're fucking That'd smart, be cool. smarter and they fuck everything up in the in the ocean, pretty much. Yeah, but they, would... they don't live in like uh like warm areas of the ocean, do they? Yeah, but they don't feel the cold. They're fucking no, but I'm like you want to at least be somewhere like cool, you know? Like I don't want to be out in the fucking Arctic. Like I want to be somewhere oh, like but they're like off the coast of DC, <sighs> is nice. Yeah, that's true, I guess. I think I'd be I'd rather be a dolphin. Dolphin would be cool, but or like a whale, fucking shark, killer, you know, like a tiger shark or something cool, you know. Killer whales kill dolphins. Have you guys seen the um harpy eagle? That thing's fucking yeah, cute. those are fucking crazy. Yeah. Are you just looking up massive birds? Yes. <laughs> You're funny. These kind of look like owls too, right? Yeah. yeah. Damn, that thing is big. Yeah. And it's bad. Oh, I'd love to be that thing. Yeah, that would fuck you up for sure. Yeah, that's crazy. If I saw that thing flying at me, I'd just give up. Yeah, I think I could. That would be a good choice for sure. You that would fuck some shit up right there. Look at the oh, fucking fuck talons, that. talons on Look it. At that thing. Yeah, that's evil looking too. Look at it. That's oh, a I'm fucking. Gonna... That's not a bird. <laughs> what is that thing? Like I would give up. I would. I would even fight back. Look how big it is. Nope. Jesus. And he's just sitting next to it like it's nothing. Yeah, I guess flying would be the coolest shit. I'm gonna go the opposite route. I'm gonna go with the small bird. I'm gonna go like a. I'm gonna go a, a hummingbird and just like, fucking zoom in and out of people. Like go go down to the cities and just fuck with people. Like in in and out of their heads and shit. This is you, Brett. Yeah, right here. Hummingbird. Fucking hummingbird. Look, uh, there's uh, Brett. Look at him. Brett. He wants to, <laughs> look at him. He wants to be little. You're not touching me. You can't, you can't catch go. me. Yo, those things are tiny and quick. You can't even see their wings. They fly so fast. I think I'm still going to go with a bear. Why? <laughs> really? A bear? I love bears, man. You've lived half your life as a bear. Fuck. Look at, like, the, look at this. Walk around thing. uncomfortably. Look rub your the... back on. Rub your back on a tree. Yeah, I'd be, yeah. Used, to, I'd be used to it already. Look how cool that fucking is. Yeah, I'm going to go with a bear. I think I think bears are the coolest fucking animals, man. That's your favorite animal? I don't want to say it's my favorite. I just, I don't know, man. I like watching bear videos and shit. I'm just uh, fascinated by how they fucking hunt and shit. It's just, I don't know. If I'm going land animal, I'm doing like a tiger. Yeah, I, 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 if I'm going land animal, I'm going lion. Yeah, I would No, like, I, get, lion's like a pack. I want to do a tiger where you're out by yourself. You're just fucking shit up okay. yourself. Like a True. fucking panther, like hiding in a tree, you know? Yes, you just, mm. everything. Yeah. I'd King like, of the, I, I would go with black leopard just because it's fucking cool looking. Black leopard. What about a cheetah? Those things are fucking fast. Like Boom! Right there. See? Yeah, I go with that. Well, let us see. Oh shit! I'm like, <laughs> I, I mean, I thought you guys were looking at it. I'm we're like just staring at, at each other. I'm like looking at it by myself. Yeah, that's pretty fucking badass. Like they're that. cool as hell. Yo, but being something like that rare, like that cool, someone's gonna try and fucking hunt your ass. Oh, that's one hundred percent. Yeah. Like, there's some crazy rich dude from Montana that's up in Africa, definitely trying to kill you. You know. <laughs> Look how cool that fucking looks, though, man. Yeah. Okay. Be badass. All right. Well, Logan, thanks for coming on, buddy. Of course. Thanks for the invite. This is like your first real episode. It was. I know. You. Everybody's like, you should talk to him about getting on the podcast. I'm like, ah, if he wants me on, then he'll get me on. Oh, now you're on. There you go. Is there anything you You're want on, to celebrate? Is there anything we didn't ask Logan that's like a prerequisite for the show? I'm an open book. Do you wipe sitting no, or standing? Can't do like. Oh, do I wipe sitting or standing? Sitting. Thank I God. do not. Well, kind of like like this. <laughs> Hold it. Like, like a squat. It's got, it's got, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm kind do of you, up. Do you stay like completely sitting and just like reach under you? No, one, I'm like I'm like this. One cheek. Yeah. So you're standing then, Logan. That's not sitting. Yeah. It's like a we, squat. That's standing. That's standing. Dude. That's, that's standing. how I do it. That's standing. Yeah. Well, then I guess we're going standing. No, man. One yeah, of my me one and of my Fu, I do. We do the lift. The lift I over. 
I don't feel like I'm getting a good wipe if I do the lift. Oh, fuck that. Yeah. That's a better way to do it. Your shit's still open. Not pun, nope. no pun intended. You're, you're, dude, my ass is so big. That shit is closed at all times. <laughs> oh, God. I can't. I Have you can't seen be, mine? It's I knew we couldn't get through it. It's just a mess it. at all times, Fuest. <laughs> it's, it's only clean after a shower. Logan. Yeah. Full roll and the shower. Yes. What's your favorite position? Sex wise, I would go. Oh, no, fucking running wise. Yes, sex wise. <laughs> Up, upright. No, um, <laughs> upright. Shit. I'm either doggy or. Not either. There's one. Pick Just one. Just one? Yes. Fuck. <laughs> Definitely, probably. Uh, mm, missionary, me on top. For sure. Missionary, you on top? Yes. What the Man, fuck? Don't, don't hate don't hate the OG stuff, you know. I I apps, I don't know why I love that position because are you making I'm love? Complete control, and I got a lot of thrust power. You're making you love. Making love. <laughs> You're making love. That's why you want to make out the whole time. I mean, I didn't say I was going all slow and sensual. Oh, okay. Are you staring? Are you staring in the eyes? <laughs> I'm like gazing in her eyes. That's how locked in. <laughs> Missionary locked Jesus. in. I want right. to see the expression. Uh, right. Logan, if you had to share a rubber with anybody, who would it be? God, well, anybody on the po- anybody on the podcast, not just hard about this one. All everybody. I don't use them. I know, but if you had to share, like good you, answer, but you and another guy. None of us have used one in forever. <laughs> 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 What's a condom? <laughs> if oh fuck, uh, who's the least dirty on the podcast? It's a good question. Who had when was the last time you wore a condom? Oh my god. I was 20. 20? So like over 20 years ago. I think it was over 20. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Did they make condoms back then? Yeah, they were like they were like steel. You just put like a steel. Yeah. <laughs> like like wool. wool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Knitted. Yeah. So you, you, you actually you actually used to wash it back then and use it again. Yeah, it was like yeah. a regular you just wash it, put it back on. Yeah. Put it in the washing machine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Logan. I don't know why, but the first one that pops in my head that's the least dirty would be Paul. That's a good choice. Oh. Yeah. That's Maybe. a good one. He's not the least dirty, but yeah, that's a good one. Who <laughs> <laughs> had knows? Yeah. Oh. Um, what other podcast prerequisites do we have to do Logan answer that we've done on here? Hmm. We did the fast food. Oh, spoon, what's your spoon favorite or fork. spoon or fork? He's spoon. Spoon. What's Good. your favorite movie of all time? Titanic. <laughs> wow, goes with what a, a choice. Goes with a missionary. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's in that car, you know, in the yeah. car with the yeah. steamy windows. He's yeah, like, yeah. On the, on the hands. <laughs> <laughs> who That's knew? Lo- who knew Logan was such a romantic? Oh, no, I. I who when you have, that's a, when that's you, a fucking good movie though you can't do it's a that. great movie when you have sex movie. do you like candles no no okay i'm just checking i'm just making movie. sure i just want to know i just want to know do you put on r&b music oh, for sure no, we act, which, whatever movie's playing is what we just go to it could be a okay. horror movie doesn't matter he's doing netflix and chill yeah. so Titan- yeah. titanic's your favorite movie what's your favorite com- comedy um oh which cat williams episode there was a cat williams one. i can't remember the name of it though that's cat good though williams. cat williams buddy it was definitely it's either cat williams or dave chappelle for sure dave chappelle is funny yeah um but i don't know what but those aren't yeah, yeah movies. Those are movies. Movies. not movies though we're not talking I about stand-up think, like that's a hard question to think of on the spot what's your favorite comedy off top step brothers okay yeah that's a good or point. or semi Damn, step brothers is good or, or what i like semi pro too yeah it's kind of like got more of a cult following but yeah i think step brothers would be one of them, one of the top ones, anyway. Step Brothers is a classic, though, so you can't go wrong. Oh, what was the fucking Black Sheep? Was Adam, Black Sheep's good. Adam Sandler, Adam Sandler, Chris Farley. Yeah. David Spade. It's old. It's funny though. It's, it's funny. Super as fuck. Ooh, what about uh, the Water Boy? Oh, I was gonna watch that again the other day. Great that was movie. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Good movie. That's a good one. I mean, okay. any of those he went on the spree with were great. Right? Well, he was great in the beginning, and then he, Adam Sandler, kind of shit the bed after that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you like only... Little Nicky and those kind of movies. Then those were all good movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Logan, favorite action action star? <sighs> Fuck, who's an action star? I don't, don't answer, Ian. 
favorite like action don't song? answer i know who you're gonna say don't answer uh, don't, come on logan you have to answer something fuck well i'm trying to think of some people it's not the fucking rock say anything <laughs> well uh, no, no probably jason rock. statham eh, not bad it's no keanu reeves but yours is, yours is jackie Aww. shan remember Oh, yeah, Jackie Chan. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, because I said he does all his own stunts. He's the only actual Bruce Lee. action star. Yeah, but you know? it sucks. Yeah, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris, Norris. yeah. These are real action stars, you know? So uh, Yeah, but I'm it, I'm taking the star from the movie. So the for the, the not the, the person, people. not the you person. The the I want the real, the real one. I want, um, we're talking about the action figure, not the person himself. Yeah. So I like, mean, I'd, I'd probably take Keanu Reeves then. Rambo one, a good one. Rambo, yeah. Rambo. Rambo one. Rambo one. Brett, favorite action star? Um, that's a tough one. Keanu Reeves, really? I guess because of uh, yeah, man. Yeah, The Matrix and John Wick, like that's two fucking good movies right there. You know, John Wick. What happened to Jackie Chan? He dumped him. Oh, I still like Jackie Chan, but I'm talking about fake action stars. You know? Oh, okay, okay. I mean. Yeah. Keanu Reeves is pretty good with his like gun shit. Like he actually does that in real life, like three gun competitions and stuff. You know. I think I just uh, I got Rambo I'm stuck on Rambo one. I watched it recently. It's amazing. Brett, I'm with Sylvester as well. I just I like a lot of his movies. Yeah. Even 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 when you're you know the boxing as well. Um, with what was the ones like within the, the jungles? Sorry, oh, that was Rambo. That was Rambo. Rambo. Was Rambo. Okay, and but, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised nobody said Arnold. Yeah. Predator, yeah. Predator, Arnold. I mean, he's got some good movies, but like, you know, yeah. There's better right. ones. Ian, any other prerequisites for the show that we that we got to make Logan answer? I don't think so. It's the, that's the basics. The basics of it. Sex or blowjob? If what for the rest of my life, I had to pick one. Yeah. Yes. I'd much rather have sex the rest of my life than a blowjob. Good. Thank God. In a missionary position with Titanic playing. Yes. Look, hey, hey, look, if that's the rest of my life, as long as it's good sex, I'll be all right. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be emotionally in tune with it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Crying a little bit, you know. That's good. That's a good time. It makes it. Hey, it makes very good moments. Yeah. I'm gonna try it. Who is gonna be sleeping while eating a pizza, like pizza on his chest, getting a blowjob? You know. <laughs> oh my God, that's the worst fucking visual ever, dude. <laughs> but it sounds enticing. <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah a little bit until you All start right, crying crying <laughs> at the end <laughs> a little cry is good for you man you got to get those out sometimes you know yeah what was the last time you cried brett oh man years really I don't, years yeah Fuck, years. it's like I cried, it's like I cried yesterday i know it's like no days. i cried like the other day like literally years See, but when I th- yeah when I don't, I don't actually like shed tears like greatly obviously you have those feelings and stuff but actually shed tears there's probably you know a family death and maybe like have been four years ago but yeah. um yeah, i don't get too, like too emotional and like i won't just start crying for no reason until you're my pretty, index is too high yeah. <laughs> you're pretty even keel then yes that's surprising for a bodybuilder. Most of us are like. Gwen and I are not even keel. No, <laughs> fucking all over the place. Well, Logan, Logan cried too. What did you cry about, Logan? Anything you want to do? Watch Titanic. Titanic. <laughs> I'm Titanic. watching the movie. <laughs> Man, honestly, there's no fucking telling. You just, I just, you ever just have days just fucking just want to cry for no fucking you know what, reason? Know what? The, know what shows I cry at watching the most? Like shows like uh like The Voice or like America's Got Talent or like American Idol. Those make me cry all the time. I'm embarrassed really? to say America Got Talent got me a couple times. I'm yeah, embar- I'm embarrassed, to, I'm embarrassed to admit it. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, the worst. Brett's looking yeah. at us like we're retarded. He's like, "What the fuck are you?" Guys- <laughs> no, I mean, I definitely feel those, especially how they like set up the storyline and like yeah. it grabs your heart, and you're like, yeah. "Oh my gosh!" But I'm not actually like letting them flow. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm not asking for tissues. I'll be like, "Wow, that was crazy." And then Yvonne is over there crying to my lap. I'm like, "Yeah,", yeah. and then like, <laughs> <laughs> "All right, let's get out of here." Fuck. Uh, all right, let's talk next week then. Yeah. All right, guys. See you guys. All right, boys. Take it easy. Guys. See Bye. ya. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.